Episode 281 You've already caused harm to me. How are you going to make it up? Hearing that, David was immediately unhappy. April is really stone-hearted. My son is so nice to her, yet she treated him so cruelly for nothing but some evidence. Olive laughed. <laughs> it's not some ordinary evidence. That evidence can save her father. Anyone would fall into a dilemma for that. Director, young master is not an unreasonable person. If you tell him now, he might rebuke you. If he were to find out by himself, there would be serious trouble. David pulled a long face. As a director, how could he ever be afraid of a rebuke from his son? That would be seriously embarrassing. However, he had already lost his wife. If he lost his son and daughter too, he would really be in trouble. He didn't like Aaron, but after all, he was his son. At last, Olive added, Most importantly, Esma was using you. She's breaking the relationship between you and your son. Are you going to let her do that? Of course not. Mentioning Esma, David was so angry. Days ago, he called and asked her if she had read the file, and she said no. She faked it so well that he believed her. However, it turned out that she had been fooling him. Call Aaron right now. Ask him where he is and tell him to come here. If he refuses, tell him that you know why April broke up with him. David ordered. Yes, sir. Olive turned and called Aaron. After ending the call, she said, Young Master said that he'll be on his way once I told him that it's about April. He'll be here in 40 minutes. David nodded, then subconsciously touched his own face. He remembered how Aaron hit him eight years ago. That boy's fists were as heavy as hammers. Not long ago, he was punched by Lewis. His injuries had just healed. Thinking about that pain, he started feeling uncomfortable. A while later, he said to Olive, Go and bring me a helmet. Olive was a little speechless. I'll also wear a military padded coat. David stood up. With the coat and the helmet, he wouldn't suffer too much pain even if his son hit him. Forty-five minutes later, Aaron quickly walked over. At first sight, he saw David pacing in the living room, wearing a helmet and a military padded coat. It was over 20 degrees Celsius. Seeing his father dressed like that, he was astounded. Why are you wearing that? Did you do something awful? Are you afraid that I might kick your ass? Standing beside David, Olive nearly burst out in laughter. Aaron really knew his father well. What are you talking about? I was reorganizing the storeroom just now. I found these and decided to try them on. Surprisingly, they still fit. David gave him a threatening glance. Finding that Aaron's clothes were wet, he paused for a second and asked, Have you been standing in the rain at April's downstairs every day? Aaron got impatient. Just tell me why she broke up with me. David cleared his throat and then gave Olive a signal with his eyes. Olive immediately started talking. Miss Eisenberg broke up with you because Esma threatened her. Esma is holding some important evidence that can clear Kenneth's name. Miss Eisenberg chose to leave you because of her father. Esma? Aaron instantly tightened his body. He stared straight at Olive and asked, What important evidence? Rachel had something. Olive glanced at Aaron then continued, I guess you find out about that too. Aaron nodded. Didn't Isaac take that thing? How did it fall into Esma's hands? Isn't she just an ordinary woman? Has someone else been helping her? Who could be capable enough to find that evidence before me? David snorted and said, She's with Peter, the CEO of Panache Holdings. Peter is quite rich, Aaron nodded. But I started the investigation before the new year. Esma didn't even know April then. It's not possible that he found the evidence so quickly. Because... David closed his eyes and said, I've been looking into Kenneth's case before the new year, too. Esma was in my office previously, and I think she must have seen the document. Aaron was silently glaring at him. A wave of fury overcame him. The whole time, his own father was the cause of all this. He was the reason why April broke up with him and he was the reason behind his agony these past few days. He was the reason why April said so many hurtful things to him. He was the reason why he stood in the rain like a fool, 
Fury made him throw punches like a madman. David backed away instinctively and he raised one hand. I didn't expect this to happen. I thought something wasn't right that day when you came to look for me. I asked Olive to look into the matter immediately. Esma is too manipulative. Look, I'm telling you the truth right after I found out about what happened. After all, you're still my son. I won't let anyone bully you. How dare you? Aaron's eyes widened in anger. I was so boggled as to how Esma managed to obtain the evidence before me. It was you. Why did you look into Kenneth? Were you planning to threaten her just like Esma did? Nonsense, David said awkwardly. You're with a random girl. Isn't it normal for a father to find out about his son's partner? I just found out about her dad coincidentally. Yeah, you've come a long way with your investigations. Aaron mocked him. You even found out about Rachel. You're even more thorough than me. David's lower lip quivered, but he was at a loss for what to say. He was damned that his son knew him so well. That's right. I was planning to do that in the beginning, but I didn't. I told Olive to destroy the document. You can ask Olive if you don't believe me. David looked over at Olive. I don't need to ask Olive. Aaron's expression was grim. You were really looking out for me, aren't you? You should have given me the documents when you got them in the first place. You knew I'd be much slower than you. All of this wouldn't have happened if you had given them to me. Don't be too impudent. You didn't put in a single good word for me when your mother divorced me, David refuted. You deserved it. Aaron was shaking all over. I wanted to ask you anyway, if you really cared about my mother. Why did you let Esma into your office when she came over to visit you? What are you doing? Did you take pity on her, or were you planning to rekindle your old love now that you've divorced my mother? Don't be ridiculous. It was all because of Jenica's injury. Do you know how guilty I felt about the fact that she can never be a mother? I wanted to talk to Esma about the arranged marriage. David supported his heavy head. You should blame Esma for what happened. Leave me alone. I won't leave you alone. Why are you all layered up and wearing a helmet? Aaron kicked the stool in front of him forcefully. You knew that you were going to get beat up. David pointed at him, shaking his finger. You will be punished by the heavens for hitting your father. Step by step, Aaron approached him with a cold face. The last time he wanted to punch his father so much was when he had hurt Caitlin. Young master! Olive hurriedly stood before David and said, Director had informed me once he found out the truth. He really does not want you to get hurt. I'm sorry. You have already caused harm to me. Tell me, how are you going to make it up to me? Aaron turned to avoid Olive. His entire body still radiated anger. Make it up? David paused for a second. Yes. Aaron pressed his fist and cracked his joint. We can do a little father and son battle. Didn't you like that the most when I was little? Or you can give April that jade pendant that was passed down from our ancestors. Then I won't battle you. David's face turned dark with anger. Your great-grandmother gave me that jade pendant. It's worth over ten million. You want me to give it to her? Are you out of your mind? Aaron snorted and said, It's so cheap. How dare you even mention it? If it was not for my great-grandmother, I wouldn't even bother to ask you for it. You. You. David trembled. He could not make ten million, not even if he worked hard all his life. It seems that you don't want to give her the pendant, so we're going to do the battle. Let's see if you have lagged behind during these past years. Since you're wearing a helmet and this thick coat, I'll have to attack you in the face, Aaron said, pushing David away. David was rather strong, yet Aaron had easily pushed him away. David did not want to fight him. When he was around 20, he was trained well in the special forces. Later on, he retired, but he still kept working out every single day. David was over 50 years old now and was going to retire soon. How could he possibly be a match for a son? Earlier, he had been beaten by Lewis, and the pain lasted for a couple of days. Thinking about that, he shrank back a little. So he said, All right, since you insist on marrying April and refuse to listen to anything I've said, I've no other choice. As long as she becomes my daughter-in-law, I'll give her the jade pendant. Aaron stopped and said to him coldly, 
Don't forget what you just said. David was so upset. I must have owed you a debt in the previous life, and in this life, you became my son to claim it. Tell me, how are you going to deal with Esma? It's reasonable for you to teach her a lesson and give her some punishment. But still, think about Jenica's feelings. I've confirmed that Jenica does not know about this. Maybe you should talk to her, ask her to tell her mother to stop. Also, she should break up with that married man. Have you found where she hid that evidence? Aaron asked with a frown. I was only trying to find out what was happening. I couldn't have looked under her bed in the beginning. She hid that evidence long ago. How am I supposed to know where it is? Said David impatiently. Stay out of this. I have my own plan. Also, don't tell anyone about this. Not even April. After saying that, Aaron turned and left. By the door, he stopped, turned around, and said, If you can always be like this, I won't feel annoyed every time I see you. After saying that, he left with big strides. David paused for a second, then pointed at the door and cursed. That little bastard! How dare he say that I'm annoying! I didn't even say that to him. Director, aren't you feeling hot? Olive asked with a smile. Hearing that, David realized that his hair and back were soaked in sweat. Episode 282 She Sold April to Be a Godmother Aaron drove away from the house. He felt exhilarated. Jenica still liked him. She said all those hurtful things just to traumatize him. That stupid woman. That idiot. How could she allow Esma to threaten her and leave him like that? Was he not trustworthy enough? Or was he someone that could be readily sacrificed to save Kenneth? Didn't he take up 80% of her heart? The more he thought about it, the more upset he got. He was angry, grieving, and sorry for himself. She had hurt him. She would not be forgiven so easily. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got. When he entered the city... He called Winnie immediately. Mr. Bennett, do you need anything? I'm in a guitar lesson. Winnie whispered over the phone. I need to see you now. Give me your address. Aaron said coldly. If you don't come out to meet me, I will make it so that your guitar skills won't be of any use. Don't tell April about this either. Aaron warned her. Winnie had no choice but to tell him where her training center was. The place was far from where he was, yet he arrived at the building within half an hour. Winnie was waiting for him by the roadside. When she saw his car pull up, she was a little scared, but she still got in the passenger seat. Before she could sit down, Aaron hollered at her. Who said you could sit there? That seat is for my woman. Go sit in the back. Fine. You win, Winnie thought. She shut the door and sat in the back. She wanted to run when she saw how cold Aaron's expression was. Even though he was a good catch, she was still impressed at how April could stand all his antics. Mr. Bennett, if you want me to convince April to get back together with you, I can't help you there. It's your own relationship problem. Serves you right for not allowing me to taste a single bite of your bento box, Winnie thought to herself. No, I'm here to ask you about some things. Aaron turned to look at her. You were best friends with April. You should know about Esma threatening her. Winnie's eyes nearly popped out of their socket. Mr. Bennett, you've already found out? I knew it! Aaron chuckled and pounded his fist into the steering wheel. How dare you, Asma? How dare you interfere with my relationship? She thinks that she can do whatever she pleases after getting involved with a rich old man. When he was shuddering in fear, it was best for her to keep quiet. Let me ask you, what else do you know? Aaron frowned. How did Asma threaten her? Tell me the exact details. When he decided to tell him everything, since he had figured it out anyway. She threatened April and she said she had to leave you. She made it clear that she must hurt you deeply. She told April to do things that would make you detest and hate her. Things that you would never forgive her for. Then she would give April the evidence after three months. She wanted you to see her in bed with another man at first. But April rejected her proposal. Her compromise was to use Ryan to antagonize you. We didn't expect you to continue chasing her so relentlessly. April's in a difficult position now. That fool! Why didn't she tell me this? Aaron gritted his teeth. Doesn't she trust me at all? We'd have solved this together. She said... When he looked at him helplessly, 
She said she wanted to tell you about it and put on an act in front of Esma, but your acting was too flamboyant and unbelievable. Exaggerate? How dare she say that? Why would he exaggerate? Aaron's chest heaved. He was so angry. He wasn't trained in acting, but there was nothing in the world that he couldn't do, as long as he seriously wanted to do it. It was nothing but acting. How could it be too hard for him? She not only didn't distrust him, but also doubted his ability. I see. She has some big misunderstandings about me. Aaron abruptly sneered and said, It's time for me to show her my real abilities. Don't. Winnie gave a start. Your exaggerated way of acting is certainly going to ruin the whole plan, she thought. What do you mean? Do you think I'm exaggerating too? Aaron questioned her with a grim face. No, no, Winnie stuttered. Mr. Bennett, I think the world owes you an Oscar award. Aaron snorted and continued. What else did she say? Is she simply going to hurt me and trample upon my feelings like this? Does she think that my heart is made of iron? Did she think that when she got the evidence and came back to me, I'd be moved and accept her again? Isn't she thinking too highly of herself? No matter what the reason she has, she has already hurt me. Winnie hurriedly nodded and said, You're right. So April said that she'd try her best to get pregnant before she broke up with you. And when she got the evidence, she'd go back to you with a pregnant belly. You may give up on her, but not the baby. Did she really say that? Aaron's eyes glowed. Yes. Winnie prayed silently. April, please don't blame me for telling Mr. Bennett the whole truth. He already knew, so if I didn't make it clear, he'd bear a grudge. I'm surprised. Aaron raised an eyebrow, thought for a moment, then shook his head with a smile. She even came up with such a shameless plan. She's really trying hard. She's such a scheming girl. No wonder I fell into her trap, he thought. Now I see why she was so passionate in bed those few days. It turned out she was trying to get pregnant. Is she pregnant now? He asked. Winnie was speechless. This is only the third day since she broke up with you. How could it be so fast? I don't think so. Earlier she told me that those few days were her safe period, so it's not likely to happen. Aaron immediately fell into regret. He thought he was going to be a father. He wanted so much to have a little girl who was as adorable and silly as April. He had no such feelings before he had a girlfriend. Now he had a girlfriend, and he was going to be 30 soon. He was not a boy anymore. Many of his army friends had more than one child now. As he fell into silence, Winnie gathered her courage and said, Mr. Bennett, since you know the truth now, maybe you should tell April. She's been quite miserable these days. Esma called her and threatened her again. She wanted her to be crueler to you, but she couldn't bear doing it. Watching you showering in the rain every day downstairs, she couldn't even eat. She deserves it said Aaron. Don't tell her about this for now. Since she likes acting, I'll cooperate. Please don't, Winnie thought. You're really not good at that. Don't worry, I won't go and see her again. She can focus on Esma now, Aaron said. I don't know where she hid that evidence, indeed. Since she likes playing games, I'll play with her. The mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the oriole is behind it. In three months, I'll let her know what it means. Mr. Bennett, what are you going to do? Winnie was a little worried. I don't trust April's acting skills, so I can only cooperate with her and pretend not to know anything. Aaron gave her a proud glance. Was it really time to seek personal revenge? Winnie sympathized with April. If you tell her anything, I will put a halt on your career. Aaron threatened her. Winnie couldn't help but say, Mr. Bennett, do you think you can threaten me with my career whenever you please? April's my friend, after all. Between my career and my friend, I will always choose my friend. Oh, really? Aaron chuckled. If you don't listen to me, I will sow discord between the two of you when we marry in the future. I will be her husband and live under the same roof as her, after all. Do you think your friendship will still be intact then? You can decide for yourself. When he held sharply, how could there be anyone like him? Absolutely shameless. Tell me then, Mr. Bennett, what do you want me to do? Winnie was afraid of what he could do. Aaron chuckled. Since she wanted to have my babies, I'll let her have them. I quite like the idea of that. He was the one who wanted to marry and have children in the first place. April thought she was still too young to be a mother. She was planning to wait for another three to four years before she considered it. 
Although he thought it was a little late, he was going to be over 30 years old then. However, he was willing to respect her decision. She was so young, after all. Since she wanted to have his children out of guilt, he was happy to let her. The sooner he became a dad, the sooner they could get married as well. That would save him the worry of her running away. He was really taken aback this time. He was worried she would break up with him over something else. Perhaps Kenneth might disapprove of him when he was released, or her brother might oppose their marriage too. Things were unpredictable. It would be best for her to carry his child for now. It was a lesson for her too, after treating him so cruelly. Mr. Bennett, I think you're being a little immoral here. Winnie held back her laughter. She hadn't seen this coming at all. I'm not forcing her to have my child, Aaron said. She wanted to do so herself. I'm just allowing her to do what she wants to do. Relax, her career won't be affected. I'll definitely hire a nanny after she delivers. Don't you want to be a godmom? Aaron prodded her after she was silent for a while. If you cooperate with me, I will let you be the godmother of my child. My child will probably be a national political leader of some sort. Think about it. It's worth it for you. Winnie rolled her eyes. He hadn't even donated a sperm yet, and he was already so sure that his child would become a national leader. Where did his confidence come from? She did love children, though. She had never been a godmother before, but it sounded like a lot of fun. All right. You promise that you'll make me the godmom, right? Yup. Get out. Aaron gestured towards the car door. Winnie clambered out of the car in a daze. She only thought about what she just promised after the car pulled away. She sold April to be a godmother. She looked at her apartment full of guilt. She was uncomfortable when she saw April, but she had to pull her act together. Why didn't I see Mr. Bennett just now? April was bothered, too. Erin had left after 12 o'clock that day. She sighed. She felt uneasy and dejected. He probably gave up on her. It had been raining all day, and she hadn't shown him any affection or concern. He couldn't possibly wait for her for the rest of his life. Episode 283. You have a baby? Yesterday, he said in front of so many people at school that he would look at her and wait for her, whether she wanted it or not. It had only been two days since she had broken up with him. Wasn't he giving up too easily? What are you thinking? Seeing her upset expression, Winnie asked with concern, Aren't you supposed to be happy? I should be happy. But I also feel that he gave up on me too easily, April said, disappointed. Am I a little self-contradictory? What on earth do you want? Winnie felt speechless. You fall into Mr. Bennett's trap like this. No matter what, this is the best result for now. Just get your dad out of prison first. Will I have lost him by the time dad gets out? April started to have some unpleasant thoughts. He's a weird person indeed, but he's also rich and capable and handsome. Other people will fall in love with him. There are too many crazy girls these days. That's possible, said Winnie. The world of rich people is very complicated. They can have new girlfriends every three months or even three days. Hearing that, April was entirely shrouded by the frustrating atmosphere. Winnie glanced at her with pity, then went to the kitchen to make dinner. April didn't eat much. The next day, no one gave her flowers on her way to school, and no broadcast interrupted class. In the cafeteria, the staff gave her regular meals, the same as what all the other students had. There were no well-cooked pork ribs or chicken wings. April had no appetite at all. The few girls sitting behind her were whispering to each other. Their voices were loud enough for April to hear clearly. That's April, right? Yeah, yeah, that's her. She's pretty indeed. Pretty that he has to marry her. Does she really need to act like that? She even turned down a nice man like Mr. Bennett. You're right. I heard that she dumped him. Mr. Bennett wooed her in public, yet she barely responded. 
Maybe she thinks that he's in love too deeply with her. But now he's stopped coming to the school. She should have seized that rich and handsome guy. But now she's ruined it. I heard that she's pretty close with Ryan. She broke up with Mr. Bennett because of him. I have to say that even though Ryan is popular, he's not as mature and rich as Mr. Bennett, after all. I can't believe that there's a woman in the world who would turn down a perfect man like Mr. Bennett. The more she listened, the more anxious April felt. No wonder Aaron was so narcissistic. He was turned narcissistic by those ignorant girls. She put down her chopsticks and asked Winnie, who was eating her food, Do you think Esma will believe me? I mean, we broke up quite easily. Winnie raised her head, glanced at her listless face, and responded, If you stay this way, I think she will believe you. What way? Like a soulless person. You're distracted. Your eyes are unfocused and you don't even eat your favorite food. Winnie picked up a piece of potato from her plate while speaking. April touched her own face, wondering if she really looked that bad. Think whatever you want, because you'll soon be laughed at by the whole school, said Winnie with no mercy. April couldn't even swallow one grain of rice. In the next few days, April found that she had really become like a punchline at school. Wherever she went, people pointed fingers at her. What made her feel sadder was that Aaron seemed to have disappeared from the world without leaving even a trace. Caitlin had called her and asked what happened. She felt pretty sorry for the fact that April wasn't going to become her daughter-in-law. However, she had been through the same and understood that two people going on and off was a normal thing. Even some married couples had to divorce in the end, not to mention the people in mere relationships. After all, April was still young. Sylvia went to school to see April in person and asked her, April, my brother said that you two have broken up. What happened? Didn't you accept his proposal? Did he say that? April felt so bitter. Aaron seemed to have agreed to break up with her. Yeah, he said that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't make you change your mind, so he gave up, said Sylvia with discontent. How could he just give up? He should spend at least one year or even half a year to try to win you back. April really wanted to nod to agree. She was touched by what he had said that day through the broadcast in school, but in the end, he gave up so easily. However, she still said, We are really not perfect matches for each other. So why did you sleep together? Asked Sylvia grumpily. My brother has taken advantage of you. But that's not important. What's important is, did my brother give you a good sum of money? He should make good arrangements for his ex-girlfriend. He should buy you an apartment or a house and make arrangements for the rest of your life. It's good that you broke up with him. You'll get nothing good from him anyway. <laughs> hmm. April winced awkwardly. She thought that Sylvia would try to make peace between them, but to her surprise, we were in a normal relationship. It was a normal thing for us to sleep with each other. It's also normal for us to break up. Because we're not good matches for each other. No one suffered losses. If what you said just now was the rule, no guy would have the courage to start a relationship. April laughed. You're right. Sylvia sighed, feeling very upset. I wanted you to be my sister-in-law. But I know that my brother isn't a good guy, so I can't force you... I'm really worried that my brother might be obsessed with some complicated woman someday, and that she might cast her greedy eyes on my money and property like those women in TV series. April didn't know what to say. Her future sister-in-law did have lots of money and property. How awful do you think your brother is? She wondered. Don't worry, I'll find you a good man. Sylvia patted her on the shoulder. April couldn't help but ask, Didn't your brother tell you why we broke up? Sylvia paused for a second, then soon figured it out. You didn't fall in love with another guy, did you? April stayed silent. Police officers do think faster than others, she thought. Sylvia looked at her, staying silent as well. As April was expecting her blame, Sylvia opened her mouth, sighed, and said, That's reasonable. After spending time with someone like my brother, you really will find that there are so many good men out there. April honestly didn't know how to respond. 
Relax. I'm not an unreasonable person. I grew up with him, and sometimes I even wanted to kill him with a broom, said Sylvia. Even dog poop is less annoying than he is. The corners of April's mouth twist. In fact, he's not that bad. I don't know. But my mother doesn't like him either. She always says that she might have done something awful in her previous life, so she had him as a punishment in this life. Sylvia smiled bitterly. I can only say that he has a good heart. But he didn't treat me, his sister, as a precious princess and didn't treat my mom like a queen. Shouldn't guys do that? April was stunned. Mother and daughter had high expectations. Sylvia explained, Look, I'm only a sister. If I marry the wrong guy, I have to rely on my brother to dote on me. My mother, too, after divorcing my dad, has had to rely on her son to dote on her. But my brother is like a block of ice. No fun at all. April couldn't help but ask, Things between you and Jeremy? Sylvia's expression froze. We broke up a long time ago. He went back to the military. My dad told me that he will be transferred back in the summer this year. But I've given up hope. He hasn't contacted me after so long. He would have called if he really cared. Sometimes relationships are really worthless. Sometimes it's all talk and no action. You get it. Don't trust what men say. You have to assess their actions. April sighed. She understood that although Sylvia said that she had gotten over him, she still needed more time to heal and recover. Don't think too much about it. You'll find the one for you. April comforted her. Yeah, we'll both find our one. Sylvia smiled. Although you broke up with my brother, it won't affect our friendship, right? Right. April smiled and nodded. It was a good arrangement. She originally thought that Sylvia would dislike her after this. She always found Sylvia likable, and she didn't want to lose her as a friend. At the Splingo Corporation, Richard was displeased with the fact that he had an overwhelming load of work to get done in the office. Previously, Aaron had been camping at April's and not turning up to work at all. More recently, he was still passing on his responsibilities to Richard, even though he had been showing up for work. Richard had a headache after reading all the documents piled up on his desk. He stood up and took the elevator up to the CEO's office. Without knocking on the door, he barged into Aaron's office. Aaron was idly reading a book on his cushy window couch when he walked in. He looked relaxed with his legs crossed. Aaron said grumpily when he barged in unannounced, What are you doing here? You should be doing work downstairs. How dare you? The economics forum is about to happen, and you have deserted all your responsibilities. And it's me to handle all of the work. I'm not the one who graduated with an economics degree. Richard pulled on his hair. I've lost so much hair the past couple of days. I'm going to be bald at this rate. If you don't know economics, you can ask your subordinates. Aaron replied as he continued reading his book. Yeah, I should go on stage and read someone else's script too, shouldn't I? It will make us look bad if work gets out. Anyway, I'm not going to represent our company at the forum. You go instead, Richard said angrily as he snatched the book out of his hands. When he saw the title of the book, he was shocked. Baby manual? You have a baby? Soon. Aaron snatched the book back and grinned at him. Richard felt his forehead for any temperature. Are you ill? You just broke up with April. Where's your baby going to come from? Can't I still have a baby? Aaron raised his eyebrows. April's already pregnant? Stay out of this. Just know that I'm going to be a dad soon. Don't tell anyone that, of course. Aaron looked up at him. It's probably going to happen within this year. Get your red packet ready. Richard was still in shock. The world was changing too quickly in front of him. He couldn't keep up. All right, you don't have to work on the forum anymore. I will go myself. Aaron said casually. You don't need a script. Aaron looked at him with disdain. I've done the speech every single year and I've never needed a script. People believe anything successful, people tell them. I could say anything and they would be impressed with me. Episode 284 Stop peeping at him obsessively. Okay, you won. I'll tell someone to book you the tickets. 
It'll take place in New Jersey this time, and you need to be there for three days, Richard said. There are lots of young and talented people in the finance world now. Our company needs new blood. We need brave and creative people. Just look around. All right. Aaron nodded, then lowered his head and continued reading. Seeing his serious face, Richard sighed, then walked out the door. When passing by Marvin's desk, he couldn't help but ask, Has your boss been acting like this the whole time? Maybe you should take him to see a shrink. Is he out of his mind? I don't. So, Marvin felt speechless, too. His boss, who had been down for a few days, suddenly brought a thick stack of books about pregnancy and babysitting to the company and spent all his spare time reading them. Marvin was extremely surprised when seeing those books, but he didn't dare ask any questions. I don't know what he's thinking. Richard shook his head. At the end of April... April got a call from Simon Game saying that after a series of discussions, the company had decided to have her dub for four of the game's characters, including the lead female role. The company asked her to fly to New Jersey to start working in three days. April wanted to share the great news with Aaron the moment she heard it. However, when she found his phone number on her phone, she realized that they had already broken up. She had no right to share her joy and sadness with him anymore. She put down her phone silently. When Winnie came back, she told her the news. Would you like to go with me? Ben Davis is the game's spokesman. I have asked some people from Simon, and they said that he's going to dub for the lead male role, so we'll definitely see each other. Hearing that, Winnie paused slightly, then showed a delightfully surprised look on her face. But soon, that look faded, and she said, Never mind. I'm not going. Just go, April tried to persuade her with a soft voice. You're not so mad at him because he didn't help me last time, are you? Winnie curved her lips downwards. That was one of the reasons. He didn't invite me. Why would I go there without an invitation? To surprise him, said April. Seriously, it's not a good thing for you to be away from each other all year round. You need to remind him of your existence. If he really loves you, he'll be thrilled to see you. All right. Winnie thought for a moment, then nodded at last. She and Ben Davis were in different situations. It was hard for them to see each other, so she guessed that he wouldn't mind. I heard that Mr. B is also going to New Jersey. He's going to attend the financial summit. What a coincidence. April was a little stunned. Really? How do you know? Haven't you been paying attention to the financial news? The economics forum that is going to take place has attracted so much attention from the industry leaders. Mr. Bay is also invited. I think he's going to go on stage and give a speech. I heard it from my classmates. Winnie smilingly pushed April's shoulders. Will we be on the same plane with him? April got a little excited. She hadn't seen him in half a month. She had never parted from him for such a long time. She missed him so much that she felt uncomfortable every single day. She looked at those old photos they had taken together, but that only made her more upset. She missed him every single day. She wondered if he missed her too. She turned, picked up a grape, and said it while peeling it. There won't be such a coincidence. I doubt that. It might really happen if you want it to. Winnie smiled. You're not going to talk to him. You can just look at him from a distance. But I don't know which flight he'll take. April sighed. It's easy. Winnie took out her phone. For company owners like him, they always take day flights. He's going to the forum tonight. I've got it. He's probably taking the 2.30 flight there. Even though there are earlier flights at 9 and 10 o'clock. Winnie analyzed. April agreed with her. He was most likely on that flight. She could be sure, though, and depended on fate and luck as well. Well, he must be sitting in the first-class cabin. It's so expensive. April was in a dilemma. The tickets will cost $3,000 without any discounts. Winnie rolled her eyes. Didn't the company at Marianne Flanders' party compensate you $3 million? I'm saving that money for my father's lawsuit. I don't know how long the case will drag on, so I can't spend that money. 
April shook her head. All right, I'll buy it for you, since you're bringing me to see Ben Davos. Winnie was already ordering the tickets on her phone. Sue, you are the best. Don't worry. I won't forget about you when I marry and have kids with Aaron. April hugged her friend tightly. Winnie was speechless. You just hurt him so cruelly, and you're already talking about marrying him and having his children? Where did your confidence come from? April looked at her awkwardly. Don't tease me. I can still have hope for my future. Forget it. I'll let it go. I'm going to order the tickets. Winnie burst out laughing. Afterward, Winnie texted Aaron discreetly while April wasn't noticing. After three days, the two of them hurried back to the apartment to pack after having lunch in the school cafeteria. When they left the house, April was wearing a denim jacket. However, she had second thoughts when she got to the door and went back in to change into a pair of jeans. Winnie was anxiously looking at her watch. Won't you hurry up? You're not a celebrity. You don't have to bother with airport fashion. April blushed. We might bump into Aaron on the plane. He hasn't seen me in a while. I don't want him to think that I've become uglier. I think you want him to be swept off his feet. Winnie blurted out. I've never seen this pair of jeans before. Did you buy them yesterday? Not only had she bought that pair of jeans, but she also bought a couple of other outfits. Aren't you worried that Mr. Bennett might think you're trying to seduce him when he sees how pretty you look? He might come chasing after you again. Why would Esma give you the evidence then? Winnie added. All right. Should I change back? April was flustered. Forget it. We're running out of time. If we don't leave now, don't even talk about meeting him if we can't catch our flight. Winnie was pulling her along and handed her a pair of shoes. They left the apartment later than expected, and there was heavy traffic on their way to the airport. When they finally arrived, it was already the last boarding call. The two of them hurried to the boarding gate and entered the VIP lounge. All first-class passengers enjoyed this privilege, and there were five or six people sitting in the lounge when they entered. The most eye-catching man among them was Aaron. He was wearing a gray vest and a matching suit, a blue shirt underneath, and a navy blue checkered tie. He was sitting on a chair in a relaxed manner, and he looked regal and composed. His lean body and long legs were obvious and accentuated. April did a double take. She hadn't seen him in such a nice outfit in a while. He was like a body of light, catching the attention of everyone in his presence. He looked foreign to her, too. The last time she had seen him was when he stood beneath her apartment, drenched like a sad puppy. Now he was chatting with a woman with a cold expression. The woman sitting next to him was Kiara Kell. She was wearing a plaid shirt matched with a high-waisted pair of white trousers and a pair of heels. She had a perfect body shape and a charming presence. Sitting together, she and Aaron somehow looked like the perfect couple. They were talking with low voices. Neither of them noticed April. Watching them, April had such a sour feeling in her heart. She felt as if she were chewing a super sour berry, which made her very uncomfortable. She knew Kira as the legal advisor of Aaron's company. Did he need to bring a lawyer to attend a high-end forum? Winnie glanced at her, then took the initiative to greet Aaron. Mr. Bay, what a small world. Are you going on a business trip too? Hearing her, Aaron raised his head, glanced coldly at her in April, then turned back to keep talking to Kira. Marvin, who sat beside him, said, Winnie, your friend has already broken up with Mr. Bay, so you two are strangers to him now. Please do not disturb him. Winnie was a little speechless. He's pretty good at acting, she thought. April spent two seconds staring at Aaron, then turned, walked to the last row of the VIP departure room, and found herself a seat. Winnie hurriedly followed behind her and asked, Are you okay? Sure. I saw this day coming the day we broke up. April took out her phone, then lowered her head to play a game. However, Winnie found that she completely messed up the game. The departure room was quiet. Only Aaron and Kira's conversation, which included all sorts of terminology, could be heard. Occasionally, Kira would burst out in laughter. April could see nothing but Kira smiling sweetly at Aaron. She felt extremely uncomfortable. Kiara herself had admitted that she was fond of Aaron. Was she trying to grasp the chance and approach him now? 
She promised April she would help her with her father's case, but did not promise that she wouldn't go after Aaron. There were many immoral people nowadays. While playing the game, April couldn't help but recall the last time she and Aaron were at the airport together. Back then, they couldn't leave each other's side. When she played the game, he would sit by her side and criticize her poor skills and slow reactions. At that time, she felt annoyed by him. But now, anything was precious to her. Winnie pushed her and whispered, Stop peeping at him obsessively. You're making a fool of yourself. I'm not. April argued awkwardly. Winnie snorted. After sitting there and waiting for about ten minutes, the airport staff reminded the first-class passengers to board early. There weren't many first-class passengers, so when boarding, April tried her best to fall behind. Her seat was located in the first row, and coincidentally, Aaron and Kiara sat behind her. As the plane started flying stably, April couldn't bear listening to their conversation, so she stood up and headed to the bathroom. When coming out, she saw Kiara walking over. April, what a coincidence. Kiara greeted her, smiling. How are things going with Esme? She said three months from now. April forced herself to smile. Good. I hope she won't break her promise. Kira opened the bathroom door. April turned back and said, Miss Cal, you and Aaron... Episode 285 Was Winnie able to take control of this man with her gentle spirit? Kira smiled as she reminded her, You guys already broke up. You shouldn't call him Aaron anymore. April frowned. Kira was still taking on her father's case after this, so she shouldn't offend her. Lawyer Kel, I've told you why I was breaking up with him. No matter the reason. You've already broken up. Kira interrupted her. You know that I like him. This is the lowest moment in his life. It's my chance to gain his affection. Don't worry, I will still take on your case like a professional. April had nothing to say. Will you adhere to my request to tell him the truth after some time? Will you still cooperate with me? I will tell him. But I don't know about forgiveness. It's up to him whether he chooses to forgive you or not. But I'll be trying my hardest during this time anyway. Kira tossed her silky hair and walked towards the washroom. April felt anger boil within her. When she walked back to her seat, she realized that Aaron was already sound asleep. With his eyes shut, his skin was radiant and his nose was sharp. He looked extremely handsome. She could stare at him all day long. But she forced herself to look away. Winnie whispered to her, Did you notice that the flight attendants have been walking around where Mr. Bennett is sitting quite frequently? April noticed it, of course. There were only two flight attendants in the first class cabin. They were walking around a lot. He was charming everywhere he went. When their meal was served, Aaron got double the portion of fruit. He couldn't finish all of it, so he gave the rest to Kiera. April was frustrated. In the past, she would be the one finishing his extra food. The two-hour flight was torture for her. They all bumped into each other again at baggage claim. Aaron bent over to help Kiera with her luggage. Since April was staying in New Jersey for over a week, she had a large suitcase with her. She collected her luggage by herself and hurled Winnie's luggage with her other hand. Kiara was carrying a small handbag when she said, Surprise! You're so strong, April! Before April could reply, Aaron said, She is quite strong. She practically doesn't need a man in her life. Let's go. Aaron didn't even look her way as he walked away gracefully with his hand in his pocket. Marvin was carrying Kiara's small suitcase. Goodbye. Kira waved as she quickly caught up with Aaron. April felt like her heart had been smashed into pieces. It's all right. I need you in my life. Winnie comforted her. 
April didn't reply. She didn't want to be needed by another woman. When they walked to the entrance of the airport, they bumped into Aaron yet again. A long Rolls Royce was parked in front of them and the chauffeur was loading up the luggage. The party of three took their seats in the car and the car pulled away. It was quite a sight to behold. Winnie remarked, Damn, they have a luxury car to pick them up. April, where is our driver? April said grumpily, Not Superstar. There isn't a pickup car. Let's go take the Metro. After ten minutes, they were squeezed together on the Metro and April was despondent. Winnie kept comforting her. It's all right. Nothing but taking the Metro. We always took the Metro before. I'm not famous now. When I become a star, I'll give you a private car and a full-time driver wherever you go. Thank you. April held her arm. She was the only one who was able to comfort her right now. But will Kira really steal Mr. Bennett away? Winnie said with concern. April was already worrying about that. Hearing what Winnie said, she felt even more uneasy. But still, she said, We've only been broken up for a few days. If he fell in love with someone else so easily, I, I think I can give up on him too. Because it means he didn't love me enough. You're right, though. Winnie nodded. April opened her mouth. What do you mean by, you're right? Can't you say something else to make me feel better? She thought, you're making me feel worse. Simon had booked a hotel for them. They spent one and a half hours traveling from the airport to the hotel via subway. When arriving at the hotel, both of them were starved. They didn't want to go out to eat, so they ordered food online. After filling their stomachs, they rested until 8 o'clock. Then, Winnie dragged April out of the hotel to search for delicious food. April was in low spirits. From time to time, she looked around. Winnie could tell what she was thinking. New Jersey is a huge city. You can't run into him just that easily. So the economics forum is taking place tonight. April felt depressed. Winnie was right. The forum that he was attending made her feel that there was a large distance between him and her now. That night, after a shower, April laid on her bed searching for news about the economics forum on her phone. The network was very advanced now. The forum had just ended, but relevant pictures could already be found online, especially that full video of Aaron's speech. He stood straight on that stage without even a draft. His accent was so perfect and his speech was so smooth, without repeated content in words. The media compared him to an illuminate, describing him as the youngest financer and investor in the industry, and as a brave, wise, and far-sighted man. April knew nothing about finance, but she too found every single word he said so convincing. His speech lasted for 15 minutes. She watched it all. At last, he stood in line with a group of financiers to take a picture. And still, he looked so outstanding. Many people say that men shimmered with charm when they were working. Aaron's not an exception. At that moment, April almost forgot that he was a freak in private. On the contrary, she was a little proud because she had slept with that charming man. That was really worth living. The next morning, Winnie rested at the hotel while April got up very early. She needed to go to Simon for a meeting. Does Ben know that you're here? I didn't tell him. Winnie shook her head. I guess I'll see him at the meeting today. I'll see if I can find a good chance to talk to him. April got dressed, said goodbye to Winnie, and then left. Simon Game was only about a ten minute walk from the hotel. When she arrived, the other voice actors and actresses had arrived as well. Around the long conference table, a young woman in a white coat was sitting near the door. She had a pointed face. April failed to recognize her. As she sat down next to her, that woman turned and said, April, I'm surprised you bounced back. I really have underestimated you. April paused shortly, then finally recognized her. Haley, why are you here? I'm dubbing for one of the supporting female roles. Haley looked at her in an unfriendly way. The lead female role was mine. It's all Jennifer's fault. She recommended you and let you get the job. 
April smiled slightly. It only proves you're not as likable as me. Or, perhaps, you're really not as good as me. You've been voice acting for Jennifer for two years already. Bye. She switched to me immediately when we met again. Shouldn't you reflect on yourself? Haley had been her competitor three years ago. April was always in the lead, although Haley felt indignant. Rosaria was still close to her back then. After April left the industry, Haley took her position in the spotlight. When she bumped into Jennifer in California, she stole her resources yet again. Haley probably hated her guts for that. April had a terrible headache when she thought about working together with her this time. I should reflect. Haley thought it was ludicrous. You relied on your dad in the past. Now you rely on your man. You are the reason why Rosaria ended up in this state, aren't you? April raised her voice to her. I nearly forgot. You were good friends with Rosaria. Everyone else in the conference room was looking at them now. Mr. Walls, Simon's project director, said, Haley Wayne, you were good friends with Rosaria Miller? She is a lunatic. You know that, right? No, I'm not familiar with her, Haley said awkwardly. We used to work together and met a couple of times. I can't compare to April's relationship with her. Yeah, she stole my fiancé. I am quite familiar with her, April said sarcastically. Everyone knew that the two had a feud because of Jennifer. The second male lead, Cal Brown, quickly changed the topic. Why isn't Ben Davos here yet? Mr. Walls, are you really going to let Ben dub for the main actor? He isn't even an actor, after all. Although I'm not an actor, I will do my best for this role. A lazy, sexy voice was heard from outside the door. April turned to see a tall, lean man walk into the room. His petite face was framed with ash-brown hair. He had thick brows and a sexy pair of lips. He had the bad boy look down. His entrance shushed all the men in the conference room. April had seen him before online and on television. She thought his dreamy looks were only an effect of the camera filters. Looking at him as he stood before her, she realized that he didn't need any filters of any sort. He was born to be in the spotlight. No wonder Winnie was so in love with him. He did look the part. He had a wild charm that was irresistible to women, a wildness that was hard to tame. Was Winnie able to take control of this man with her gentle spirit? April had serious doubts. You're here, Ben. Mr. Walls quickly stood up to shake his hand. They don't know anything. Don't take it to heart. Your fans are thrilled to have you dub this project. Don't say that, Manager Walls. Ben smiled at him. They are the professionals when it comes to voice acting. But I can learn. I hope to learn from all of you, seniors. It's our honor to work with you, Ben. Haley quickly stood up. She looked like she was in love, too. I love listening to your songs, Ben. I've been a huge fan for the longest time. Could I get an autograph? Of course. Ben smiled and looked around the room. He rested his gaze on the seat next to April. He walked over and his assistant quickly pulled the seat for him. He sat down and grinned at April. You must be dubbing for the main actress. Hello. Hi. April nodded. She wondered if he knew that she was good friends with Winnie. Episode 286, The Invisible Troop Manager Wall smiled and said, April's going to dub for quite a few characters in the game, so I'm afraid the time that you two are going to work together will be the longest. Miss Eisenberg, you're so young, but surprisingly capable. Ben complimented her with a smile. April had to admit that he was charming enough to soften any girl's heart when he was smiling. Thankfully, she was immune to handsome guys, as she had spent a lot of time together with Aaron. However, the other girls in the conference room had already been captivated by him. The meeting was mainly about the roles in the game. 
Dubbing for games was actually more complicated than dubbing for a TV series. If Simon had not been a super large game company in the country, every single one of their games was not super popular. And if they didn't have such great offers, there wouldn't be so many voice actors and actresses competing over their games. At about 11 o'clock, Ben's assistant raised an arm, interrupted the meeting, and said, I'm sorry, Ben has to attend an event at 12, so we have to go now. No problem. Manager Walls hurriedly stood up and said, Please come back at 3 this afternoon. I'm sorry. Ben stood up, unbuttoned his coat with an apologetic look, and then turned to April and said, Miss, can I add you on Instagram so I can ask you some questions about the work? Sure. E and April added each other on Instagram. After Ben left, April sat straight up. As she slightly turned her body, she saw jealousy in the eyes of many voice actresses in the room. The dubbing work lasted until 12 o'clock. After that, some people went to have lunch in the company. April prepared to head back to the hotel to meet Winnie. As she stood up, Haley, who was sitting beside her, stood up as well and blocked her way with a jealous face. Jealous of me because Ben has added me on Instagram. I think you're really boring. Excuse me, April said coldly. How could Haley not be jealous of her? If she had the female leading role, Ben would have added her on Instagram. Ben was popular all over Asia. She would even laugh in her dreams if she had the chance to work with him. He was also Prince Charming in many girls' eyes. He was so impeccably handsome. Through working together, they might even grow some special feelings for each other. April, you're just luckier than me. One day, I'll let people know that I, Haley, am as good a voice actress as you are. After saying that, she sneered and left. April rubbed her forehead. Thankfully, she didn't need to work with Haley or she would never have any peace. On her way back to the hotel, April got a message from Ben. Hi, Miss Eisenberg. This is my Instagram account for work. April immediately understood his meaning. Many artists had two Instagram accounts, one for work and one for private life. Their managers and assistants would read most of the messages on their working Instagram. It seemed that Ben was implying that she not say anything that she shouldn't via Instagram. Back in the hotel, Winnie ran to her with excitement, saying, How's it going? Have you seen Ben? I have. I have. You're Ben. So incredibly handsome and charming. Smiling, April showed her his Instagram. I've added him on Instagram. Winnie took her phone and glanced at it and said, So, this is his work Instagram. After saying that, she opened his Instagram moments and started browsing. April sighed. She had seen his Instagram moments on her way back. Almost all his posts were about the events he attended. It was rather boring, but Winnie seemed to be quite interested in it. It was really easy for someone to become too careful when he or she was in love with another person. After lunch, the two of them headed to Simon together. April started working at two. Winnie had no access to the company, so she waited outside in the lounge. After recording a segment, April hit pause. She took a break and drank some water. It was already 3.20 p.m. She was surprised. She quickly walked over to the assistant director and asked, Where's Ben? Is he here yet? Not yet. The assistant was just playing with his phone and answered her without looking up. Just do your job. Don't count on the superstars to arrive on time. It'll be good enough if they actually finish their part. I'm going to the bathroom. April walked towards the lounge. Winnie was still sitting there looking around anxiously. She had already drunk several cups of tea. Winnie looked at her. You're finished? How could I be? April felt bad for her. Ben said he would come over at three, but it's normal. Winnie laughed. I was doing a program with a superstar previously. He only arrived after being two hours late. The whole crew was waiting for him. Not all of them do it on purpose, though. Some of them really get caught up in matters. They do have a lot of events to attend. As long as you're fine with it, April sighed. I am. I've waited all these years. A few more hours don't matter to me. Winnie sounded disappointed and down. April was at a loss for what to say. She could wait for someone for years, but the worst part would be waiting for someone who wouldn't walk with you for the rest of your life. After April returned to the studio, Winnie waited until 4 o'clock before a group of people emerged from the elevator. Ben was walking at the front. 
He was wearing a gray t-shirt and a white jacket with jeans. He looked clean and refreshed. They hadn't seen each other in so long. She couldn't even remember how long exactly at that moment. She remembered that his hair was different the last time she saw him. In the past year, he had changed his hairstyle many times. He looked even more fashionable and edgy now. The media had described him as a star who could just rely on his good luck, but who had proven himself talented and hardworking as well. Winnie walked out quickly. She didn't dare to walk too close to him. She knew that she wasn't a part of the company. If she walked too close to him, she would be whisked away by his bodyguard, maybe even thrown out of the building. She didn't want to get April in trouble too. She stood a few feet away from him as she watched him quietly. Her eyes were getting wet, but she didn't want to make a scene. Ben caught sight of her as he looked around the room. He looked away casually and paused to bend down to roll up his pants. He paused for half a minute before walking into the studio with a pursed lip. Winnie was stunned as she watched the door close shut. Instead of relieving her longing for him every time she saw him, she felt like she was drifting further from him. When could she ever walk up to him and hold his hand in public? The journey was getting longer and longer for her. At around 10 o'clock at night, April finished up her work and prepared to leave. Suddenly, the assistant director stopped her. April, could you give Ben a hand if you're done? He hasn't got a good feel for voice acting yet. April looked over and nodded. She texted Winnie and walked towards Ben's studio. There wasn't anyone else in the room and it was very quiet. Air conditioning wasn't allowed and beads of sweat were dripping from Ben's forehead. You don't have to do it yourself, April said. It's no easy feat. Yeah, I thought it would be as easy as singing a song. I was too naive, Ben grimaced. But Winnie can only see me if I insist on voice acting myself. April paused briefly. She didn't expect him to have such a plan. I guess Winnie's waiting does mean something. April smiled with relief. She suffered too much bitterness because of me. She left her hometown and went to Rosewood City to fight for the future. An obvious gentleness could be seen in his eyes when he was talking. She mentioned you every time she called me. If it wasn't for you, she might not have been able to sign a contract with a music company. Thank you. It's all right, as long as you won't disappoint her. April thought for a moment and said, Can you see her tonight? She's been waiting for you out there the whole time. Later, three or four in the morning. I'll sneak out when my assistant falls asleep. Ben thought briefly, then said, You see, that one out there is my assistant. The company made her work for me. Part of her job is to take care of me, and another part is to keep an eye on me. Good. I think Winnie will be happy to know all that. April hurriedly nodded. Let's start dubbing. My assistant will get suspicious if we talk too long. Ben moved his chair closer to the microphone. April started to teach him dubbing line by line. Dubbing for games was easier than dubbing for TV series. But Ben was too poor at voice acting. April worked overtime until 1 o'clock in the morning. She was so tired that she couldn't keep her eyes open on her way back. Thank you. Thank you for working so late with Ben. Winnie fawningly offered her a massage. I didn't do it for him. I did it for you. April pushed away her hands and said, Stop it. You've waited for over ten hours. You must be tired too. Just rest a little. Later you need to go out to see him. I'm going then. Are you going to be okay staying here alone? Winnie was a little worried. What could possibly happen? I'm exhausted. I'll go straight to bed and sleep. April yawned. Despite what she just said, she didn't really go straight to sleep. She took a shower, then laid on the bed and checked Instagram moments before going to sleep. She found a new post of CEO Bennett. He had changed his Instagram name from Big A back to CEO Bennett. He posted a picture of New Jersey. Coincidentally, Kira posted a few selfies that she took in New Jersey. Aaron's back could be seen in one of them. Seeing that picture, April couldn't sleep. She was overwhelmed by all sorts of feelings. She understood that Aaron couldn't possibly fall in love with another woman so quickly, but she did not want to see him hanging out with another woman. She really wanted to call him and scold him right now. However, she had broken up with him. 
and she had said cruel words to him. If she called him now, he might think of her as an unreasonable woman. She felt so annoyed that she couldn't sleep. Winnie left at three o'clock. April fell into a shallow sleep at around four. When she was half asleep, she heard the doorbell. She thought that Winnie had come back, so she struggled up to open the door. Opening the door, she saw Aaron standing by the door, wearing a pair of white casual pants and a black sweater. The sweater was slightly loose-fitting, but still couldn't hide the shape of his chest muscles. He looked down at her, eyes glowing dimly. April was stunned. She thought she was in a dream. Just now, she had seen him in her dreams over and over again. At first, she saw him with Jenica, and then she saw him with Kira on their honeymoon. Aaron started talking. He sounded very unhappy. So you dress like this when you see people? He observed the woman in front of him, who was much shorter than he was. She was wearing sky blue cotton pajamas with the first two buttons undone, exposing the tops of her snow white breasts. انضموا إلينا في مؤتمر القمة العالمي للابتكار في الرعاية الصحية وش حيث نبحث عن حلول مبتكرة لأكبر تحديات الرعاية الصحية منذ عام 2012 ونلتزم بالنظر إلى الصحة من منظور إنساني لتعزيز المساواة والمرونة أكثر من 200 مشارك ومبتكر يشاركون رؤاهم عبر أربعة مسارات رئيسية تناقش مجموعة من أكبر التحديات الصحية التي تواجه العالم اليوم انضموا إلينا بالدوحة في نوفمبر القادم وأتموا في صناعة مستقبل أكثر صحة. Episode 287 His baby would be the prettiest and cutest. April was brazenly trying to seduce Aaron. No man would be able to resist this temptation. Although her hair was a mess, it didn't dull her natural beauty or sexiness. April was stunned. She looked down at herself and quickly buttoned her pajamas as her ears turned red. She covered herself with her arms in embarrassment. Afterwards, she realized that she might still have eye goop in the corners of her eyes. How embarrassing! I... I thought it was Winnie. What are you doing here? How did you know that I was staying here? Her heart was beating fast. She looked like a doe in the headlights. She should have acted coldly towards him, but she couldn't bear to do that after watching him interact with Kiara the day before. They weren't in Rosewood City now anyway. Esma couldn't watch them around the clock. It shouldn't be a problem if I let my guard down just this once. She comforted herself. Aaron stepped forward into the apartment without saying a word. She backed away instinctively. His handsome face looked serious, and they walked into the bedroom. He swiftly shut the bedroom door behind him. When the door shut, April jumped a little. She realized that they were alone together again, in a bedroom. What are you doing? April's heartbeat quickened. She was a little nervous, but she wasn't upset. She had been worried the night before that he would change his mind about her. Perhaps find Kira a better partner than she was. She didn't expect him to come to look for her tonight. Her heart was racing. No matter how much two people loved each other, no one could truly live without another. She was no exception. She hesitated. Should she just tell him the truth? They could get back together after two more months. April was frustrated. If only she could have gotten pregnant before she broke up with him. Just yourself? Aaron glanced at the empty bed next to hers. Yeah, Winnie is off meeting her boyfriend. He suddenly bent down as she spoke. Their faces were inches away. She backed away nervously again. This time, Aaron put his arms around her waist before she could withdraw. April was thrust into his chest, and they were touching each other, eye to eye. April nearly sank into his gaze, but she quickly asked, 
Does lawyer Kira know about your late night visit? Are you jealous? Aaron looked at her with a steely gaze. His gaze was growing deeper and deeper. April was triggered. She smiled and said, Yes, oh, I was the one that initiated the breakup. She regretted her words immediately. She almost told him the truth, but she couldn't stop herself from saying spiteful things out of jealousy. You're right. So I thought hard about what happened. I, Aaron, won't allow you to do as you please and toy with my feelings, he said coolly. Look, to date you, my company lost billions of dollars, and I lost a very expensive ring in the ocean when I proposed to you. These are devastating losses. April was baffled. Are you going to make me pay up? It's good that you know what you have to do. Aaron smiled. April did some mental calculations. That was billions of dollars they were talking about. She would never be able to pay him back. I don't think that's my responsibility. You were the one who chose to date me. I'm sorry that you had to lose billions of dollars, but it doesn't make sense for me to compensate you. As for the ring, you dropped it yourself. I didn't even get to see it at all. Breaking up with you has really allowed me to see your moral quality, Aaron said with a cold face. My company lost over a hundred million because there was an issue between you and Isaac. He hired an internet water army to attack me. As for that ring, we lost it, and I was going to dive down to find it for you. You didn't let me, so I asked the divers to look for it. I'm way more capable than them. If I went down, I could have certainly found it. Don't you think you should be responsible for that? April was completely speechless. It was impressive that he could actually pass the buck to her like that. He was so unreasonable. Breaking up allowed him to see her moral quality. She saw his moral quality too. Even if you take me to court, the judge will find you wrong, said April impatiently. Aaron snorted. I'm powerful and rich, so I get to decide if I'm right or wrong. Now let's talk about what I did for your father's case. I pulled many strings. I searched in the country. Then abroad, then in the country again. I hired Kira's entire law firm and spent at least five million on that. Also, I punished Isaac for you. In order to do that, I spent over a hundred million. I've also pulled strings to ban all the films that his company made. And I purchased that crappy film and television company. April clenched her teeth and responded, In the long term, that film and television company will do you no harm at all. It'll only bring you profit. It hasn't made me a penny so far. I've been losing money on it, said Aaron blandly. If you think it's so nice, how about I sell it to you and you pay me the money? April didn't know what to say. How could she possibly afford that? She rolled her eyes and said to him, Tell me, what exactly do you want? Pay me back. Aaron took out a file from his trousers pocket and said, Give me a child and then all your debts will be cleared. April was dumbfounded. She had been thinking about having a baby just now. She intended to use the baby to keep him from leaving her, but now he brought himself to her. What a coincidence. I've dedicated so much to you. It's reasonable for me to ask for a child. Erin glanced at her coldly. Besides, you know about my illness. I want you to bear me a child just in case. That way, I won't end up childless even if I can't recover. Also, I might get back together with Jenica. She's infertile, isn't she? So I should make sufficient preparations. Even though April figured out that he probably said that only to make her angry, she still felt annoyed. Are you with Kira? Why are you getting back with Jenica? Aaron gave her a bland glance and said, People's feelings change constantly. Like you and me. A second ago, you loved me so deeply, but in the next second, you told me that you never loved me. Kira's not bad, but only Jenica is like the pure moonlight in my heart. April sneered with anger. She had no idea that Jenica was the pure moonlight in his heart. What was she then? The dark cloud which covered the moonlight? I'm afraid your mom won't let you be with your pure moonlight, April said through clenched teeth. That's my future business. You don't need to worry about it said Aaron carelessly. I've also given you my first time. I've suffered all the losses in this relationship. April felt both ashamed and angry. I gave you mine too, didn't I? How much are you worth? And how much am I worth? There's a difference between the level of preciousness of my first time and yours. 
Not to mention the fact that you won't be able to find another 29-year-old high-level virgin guy. Aaron snorted coldly. He was the one who was embarrassed to admit that he was still a virgin. He was completely shameless now. April nearly vomited blood. She forgot to cover her breast in her moment of rage. Yeah, you should think me then, a virgin at 29 years old. You'd only say a virgin if not for me. Oh right, I forgot. You only get hard for me. I'm the only one who allowed you to experience what it's like to be a man. Aaron was quiet for three seconds before he retorted. You're right, but I've made you very happy too, haven't I? Every time I come, you come four or five times in return. I have the short end of the stick. You. April was glaring at him with rage, her chest rising and falling with her breath. She wanted to bite him out of anger. How could she have trouble sleeping out of her longing for him? How silly of her. Aaron was admiring the sight in front of him. You agree that I'm right, don't you? Now sign the papers. You are being despicable and shameless. April bit the bottom of her lip. Her eyes were filled with rage, but it was sparkling and lively. It would tempt any man, especially with her thin clothes barely covering her body. Aaron, who had been deprived of pleasures, had the sudden urge to pin her down on the bed. I'm trying to reason with you. I have evidence and reason on my side. If you're not willing, I'll have to see you in court then. Aaron bent down and looked her in the eye. You know how much you'll have to pay me then. April looked up at him. Their gazes interlocked. She was suddenly calm, her anger appeased. Although he didn't say it, she knew that he hadn't truly let her go. He didn't need to do this with his status and wealth. She was angry that he would use this lowly method, but it was a chance for them to ease their relationship. She always knew what kind of person he was. She wanted a child anyway. They would surely get back together with a child in the picture. I can agree to your terms, but you have to promise me that you'll still keep your distance. You can't use it as an excuse to come look for me every day. We can meet for those days that I'm fertile. Only you and I can know about this. No one else. April thought that it worked well for her. She didn't need to tell him the truth, and she didn't need to worry about him running away. She had wanted to tell him the truth at the beginning, but he had to proclaim Jenica as his moon. She would let him love his moon then. When she got pregnant and gave him a cold shoulder, he would surely come running back to her. Of course. I only want the child, not you. We should make the boundaries clear. Aaron grinned. He knew exactly what she was planning. She didn't want Esma to know that they still maintain contact. Although Esma had arranged for people to spy on them, he had bought all of them. He would tell her the truth when she became pregnant and when he became a dad. If she knew about it now, he would have to wait a long time before he could be a father. He just wanted a cute baby girl. He would bring her along and show her off to Richard to make him jealous. His baby would be the prettiest and cutest. Of course, if it was a boy, they would keep trying. Episode 288 Did you wait outside the whole night? He didn't want boys. Why would he have a son? A son would only make him unhappy and angry. He believed that sons and fathers were previous life enemies. Hmm. I don't think that I really like you. April was so frustrated that she even wanted to die. She finally could understand why David and Caitlin disliked their son so much sometimes. At that very moment, she wanted to bite him to death. She would have let him wait and let him beg for her to come back to him. I've told you that the person I like is Ryan. I got close to you simply to make use of you, she said. Aaron responded wrathfully. I wouldn't have a baby with you if my body could react to another woman. I see. That makes two of us, April replied with no mercy. They stared at each other for a short while, then Aaron threw the file on the table and said, Since we've made an agreement, sign your name on it. How do I know if you'll go back on your word or not? At the subsidiary agreement that I mentioned before, April pointed at an empty area on the paper and said, I'll only have sex with you during my ovulatory period, not any other days. 
Hearing that, Erin gave her a meaningful glance, then said, In fact, I can accept test tubes. But if you insist on doing it through sexual intercourse, I'm okay with it. The tips of April's ears even turned red. You just said that you want to have a baby with me because your body only reacts to me. Didn't you mean that we'll get pregnant by having sex? Aaron raised his eyebrows, chuckled, and said, You're a woman. How can you say it so straightforwardly? You see, even I didn't use those straightforward words. I'm sorry. I found that I don't need to avoid those words when I'm talking to you. No matter how straightforward I am, I can't be as shameless as you are. April took a breath. She felt that she could even watch porn together with him and stay perfectly calm now. Aaron didn't respond, but turned and found a pen from a cabinet, then added a term on the contract. Look, is this good enough? He asked. You didn't mention that we'll only have sex during my ovulatory period, April pointed out. In fact, having sex during the ovulatory period will only raise the chance of getting pregnant. If you want to get pregnant, you may even get pregnant during your safe period. Aaron said, Google it if you don't believe me. April laughed. Do you want to have sex with me anytime you want? In your dreams. If you're not satisfied, don't have a baby with me. If you want me to give you the money, I can only tell you that I have nothing to give you but my own life. Actually, she would have considered his suggestion if he hadn't said so many awful things to make her angry just now. However, he had made her really angry. All right. Aaron fixed his eyes on her body for a few seconds with slight discontent, then lowered his head to sign the contract. April took the contract, glanced at it, then signed her own name as well. April put the contract in his pocket, then took off his sweater, showing his perfect body shape. What are you doing? April was confused. Making a baby. Aaron started to remove his belt. April gave a start. I just put it down in black and white. I'm not in the ovulatory period now. Aaron took out his phone, opened the app, pointed at it, and said, The app on my phone says that you are. I'm sorry, my app shows I'm in my safe period. April opened her own app. Aaron frowned and said, What app is this? It's wrong, just uninstall it. April frowned. This is the most popular period application among girls. Why would you know more about these applications than us? I'm the one with the period anyway, not you. I am the one keying in the data. We've been broken up for a while now. How would you know when I had my last period? Erin pondered what she said. Fair point. I'll record your data again. Tell me, when was the last time you had your period? It hasn't come at all. April was dejected when she mentioned it. All this while? Your period is seriously delayed. You should run a check at the hospital. If her period wasn't regular, it would affect the effectiveness of their baby making. It's probably because I stayed up too late for a while. April frowned. It happened before when I worked too hard and didn't get enough sleep. Erin agreed with her. She slept an average of five hours every day when she was working. It must have been hard on her body. Are you going to stay up every night in New Jersey? I don't mean to nag you, but your job is too taxing. If your period doesn't come regularly, it'll be difficult to get pregnant. I'll get Dr. Henry to fill your pulse and prescribe you some medicine to help your body recuperate when we get back. He had to get her pregnant within three months. If not, she might not adhere to their agreement afterward. What's the hurry? April was baffled. I have to treat it seriously. You know, at the rate you're abusing your body, you might end up infertile, Aaron said unceremoniously. You should look after your body while you're young. April pouted. She wasn't someone who wasted her body because she was young. She did want to have children in the future. Fine, but it has to be done secretly. I don't want people to find out that I'm trying to get pregnant. Don't worry. Aaron put on his cardigan begrudgingly. I'll get going since we can't do it today. He was only there to make babies with her? He didn't miss her at all? April was missed. What? You can't bear to see me go? Aaron looked back at her. April said harshly. Scram. I won't go then. He sat on her bed. April bent down and looked at him. Mr. Bennett, I'm afraid you will have to sit somewhere else. I'm not fertile right now. I can't make babies for you. Aaron grinned. Fine then. I'll leave now. I have to climb the Great Wall with Kiara. April's smile disappeared instantly. I hope you fall off the Great Wall and break your legs, she thought to herself. Goodbye. Aaron waved and walked out the door before he added, Oh, right. 
How long are you staying in New Jersey for? One week. All right, I'll ask Dr. Henry to come over in the next few days. April was speechless. There's no rush. Your period has been delayed for over 20 days. Don't try to argue with me. Aaron wanted to nag her more, but he didn't want to show too much concern. So he held it in. I'm only doing this for my baby. He shut the door and left after saying his piece. April laid in bed again after he left. She felt like she was in a dream. She couldn't believe that she just signed a contract to have Aaron's babies. She didn't know if she should laugh or cry. It was good, though. She didn't need to worry that some other woman might steal him. She would have his child, so he would have to be responsible for her and listen to her. She had so many thoughts in her head. When she was falling asleep, the doorbell could be heard again. Once again, she struggled back up to answer the door. This time, it was Winnie. Her black, shiny hair hung loosely over her shoulders. She had stayed up the whole night, so now she looked tired and sallow. You're back! Did you have fun with Ben Davos last night? You haven't seen each other in a long time, so I guess you have a lot to say to each other. April was honestly happy for her. Winnie pressed her slightly pale lips together and dropped her eyelids. Her eyelashes shook slightly as he forced a faint smile and responded. He didn't show up last night. April was astonished. So you waited outside the whole night? Yeah. The smile on Winnie's face was bitter and her eyes were red and misty. April felt both sad and angry. Yesterday, Ben Davos said so many nice words that, that she was even touched. She felt that it was such a miserable thing for them to love each other without being able to be together. Early in the morning, she watched Winnie change her outfit a few times and dressed herself up very carefully before leaving the hotel. She wanted to leave a good impression on the person that she loved, but that person let her wait outside for a couple of hours. It was April. People could wear summer clothes in Rosewood City starting a long while ago. But in New Jersey, the temperature difference between the daytime and the nighttime was still huge. April held her hands and said, Why didn't you come back early? You're wearing so little. It's cold out there. Her hands were always cold, and now those hands were like blocks of ice. You have to work today. I worried that I might disturb your sleep if I came back earlier. Exhausted, Winnie kicked off her shoes, crawled under the quilt, and buried her face in a pillow. April sat by her side and looked at her slightly shaking shoulders. They had lived together for over a year. Winnie was always gentle and mild. April hadn't seen her crying, but she knew that she only cried on the inside. She had left her hometown for the man that she loved and chose the most difficult way to go. A girl like that would not let herself cry unless she was really, really sad. Still, she didn't let April see her cry. She turned her back to her. Therefore, April had no choice but to wait for her to stop crying and wipe away her tears. Perhaps she and Winnie were the same kind of person. They didn't like others to see them crying. As her shoulders stopped shaking, Winnie turned around. Her eyes were misty, and one corner of the pillow was slightly damp. I don't blame him. Winnie managed to smile and said. He said that his company provisionally arranged for him to take part in a foreign show so he couldn't come out. He told me to go back early. Why didn't he tell you that before you left the hotel last night? April was angry. How could he do that? Farron did the same to her. She would be so pissed off that she would punish him so hard. Aaron could be evil and sharp-tongued sometimes, but he would never let her be starved and frozen. Winnie sighed and responded. He said it's an urgent arrangement. When he was preparing to come out, his manager suddenly showed up. I've looked up the show online. He didn't lie. April fell into silence. Perhaps that was the reason why many stars used their busy jobs as an excuse when they broke up with their partners. You can see him tonight. He won't leave right away, said April. No. Tonight, after finishing the show, he'll fly to California to take pictures for a magazine cover and then fly back tomorrow at noon. Big stars are always so busy. Winnie shook her head. I plan to go back to Rosewood City this afternoon. Episode 289 Erin paced in front of her door. It's good for you to go back. She was either waiting for him at the company or in front of the hotel. 
April used to wait for Isaac beneath Magma Group as well. Waiting for someone was a long, tiresome affair. April couldn't bear to watch Winnie like this. She regretted asking her along on this trip. I think I'll focus on my album. Maybe if I don't make it, I won't even qualify to meet him again. Winnie was worn out. She had never felt this exhausted in her life before as she slowly closed her eyes. April pulled the duvet covers over her, looking worried. In the afternoon, after having lunch with Winnie, she took her to the train station. At the train station, she said, Winnie, call me when you reach Rosewood City safely. All right, don't take me further. Go back to Simon. Don't be late, Winnie said as she boarded the train. April watched her disappear before heading back to the company. When she entered the studio, she didn't leave until 6 o'clock in the evening for dinner. A voice actor's dinner is simple. Three dishes and rice. That day she had boiled tofu, boiled pork ribs, and winter melon. After a while, Ben Davos' assistant walked in with a large bento box. When he walked out of the studio, his assistant uncovered the box. Cal Brown whispered to her on the side. Fuck, look at what he's eating. Superstars get treated so differently from us. Even his dinner is ten times better than ours. Are you sure it's only ten times? April laughed and shook her head. Look at his bento. It's from the most famous restaurant. The minimum spending there is $3,000. Cal Brown glanced at his food and said through gritted teeth, He's just good looking and has a couple of good songs. His voice acting is garbage. This industry is so unfair. Voice actors don't get much at all. So different in Japan. Voice actors over there are practically celebrities on their own. There are many things that can be improved in our country's media industry. Forget about it. April sighed. Cal pouted and continued. You haven't heard, have you? Ben only walked into the studio at 5 o'clock today. You're going to have to stay till past midnight with him again. Don't say yes anymore. He's going to earn millions for just a few hours of his time. But you will be teaching him the skills for nothing at all. April didn't want to say anything. They had made an arrangement that they would start at 3. Forget yesterday. How could he be late again today? Ben walked out of the studio and his assistant handed over the bento box. He walked over to April and said, Let's eat together. There's so much food I can't finish it all. It's all right. I'm nearly done. April smiled and quickened her pace. Ben looked at her silently before picking out a few pieces of sushi and prawns and putting them into her bowl. He also proceeded to share his food with Cal. Cal's expression softened. The assistant walked over and spoke to Ben Davis while maintaining a smile on her face. Although no one else could understand what they were saying, April did. She always had an exceptional gift with languages. The assistant was asking him why he bothered sharing his food with them when they were just ordinary voice actors. She was telling him that he didn't need to lower his own standards to befriend them. Ben Davos told her that April needed to teach him voice acting that night. After dinner, people returned to their own studios. At 11 o'clock at night, when April prepared to leave, the assistant director asked her to stay and help Ben Davos again. She didn't want to, but still, she walked into that studio as she had something to say to him. Seeing her come in, Ben asked her in a low voice, Where's Winnie? Why didn't I see her today? She went back to Rosewood City. April gave a fake smile and said sarcastically, She has no reason to stay here. All she can do in this place is wait. I'm sorry. Ben Davis lowered his beautiful eyes and responded. I really wanted to see her, but there was a situation last night. April sighed quietly. This man could really break women's hearts when he apologized. However, she had never been a fan of any star, and added to the fact that she now had a bad impression of him, she honestly could not accept his apology. Yeah, because of your situation, Winnie stayed outside the hotel the whole night. She waited a couple of hours for you. It was only 8 degrees last night. She's afraid of cold weather the most. But still, she waited for you outside wearing a thin coat. In order to come here to see you, she turned down all the events that her company arranged for her and dropped all her classes in school. She came here without hesitation. April sneered and continued. Ben, I know that you're a popular singer, that you're famous all over Asia, but you're so popular that all the other people want to kiss your feet. But I only see that you hurt my friend. She's been making sacrifices for you. What have you ever sacrificed for her? An annoyed look flashed across Ben's gorgeous face as he replied. 
I've promised her that I'll make our relationship public in just a few years. I'll be responsible for her and I'll marry her. I'm only 23 years old now. If I told our relationship to the public now, my career would be affected. It would be bad for her future career too. No one asked you to do that, said April aggressively. I understand that you had an unexpected situation. The one who waited outside for you was sad. You stood her up, but expect this to end with sorry from you? Thought about ordering her some food online? In that way, she would at least feel a slight warmth? Pardon me for speaking frankly, but nowadays you can order food and flowers online any time you want. Those online stores take orders any time. If you wanted, all you needed to do was tap your phone screen for a few times. It wouldn't leak your personal information. I've been friends with Winnie for quite a long time, but I haven't seen you give her one single gift. Does your assistant have her eyes on your phone 24 hours a day? Miss Eisenberg, you're going a little too far on this. Ben finally couldn't help but frown. His voice sounded slightly unhappy. Winnie and I have known each other since high school. You've only known her for about a year. I'm grateful that she has had a friend like you during the past year, but after all, this is our business. We have our own way of maintaining this relationship. I'm a star, so I can't do whatever I want. In the last half year, my time for sleep was never more than six hours. I am doing high-intensity work. Without our relationship, I might owe Winnie everything, but you have no right to tell me what to do. You're right. I'm just a voice actor, and I'm not qualified to talk to a superstar. I should be thankful and honored to be speaking to a star like you. But I'm speaking to you today as Winnie's good friend. April mocked him angrily. Ben looked up at her for a while and said suddenly, Miss Eisenberg, the reason why you're so angry today is because I refused to help you when Winnie asked me to, right? Because I said no when she asked me to help you secure the lead role. April was stunned. She might have had an all right impression of Ben Davis before this. Now that impression was completely tarnished. I hope when he explained to you it wasn't appropriate for me to step in. Ben Davos said matter-of-factly, Didn't you land the role anyway with your own capabilities? You are really unbelievable. April couldn't stand being in the same room with him for a minute longer. I can't teach you voice acting. You should look for someone else. April turned to leave. Ben's assistant approached her and said in broken Mandarin, Why did you come out? We have a gap in our understanding of his character. You won't be able to teach him, April said and walked towards the exit. I think you were chased out because you had other motives talking to Ben Davis, not because you can't teach him, the assistant suddenly said. I saw the two of you conversing the whole time behind the glass window. Although I couldn't make out what the two of you were saying, I could tell that he was getting upset. I've seen many staff members like you. Are you trying to gain his attention? We won't be asking for your help anymore. Please stay away from him from now on. <laughs> April laughed. Incredulous. She had seen all sorts of people in the industry, but never had she met anyone so obnoxious as this assistant. Rest assured, I don't want to interact with this crappy team anyway. You guys are always late for the sessions, and you expect me to stay till one or two in the morning. I don't need this in my life. She walked away after saying her piece. The assistant looked enraged. They turned around and said to the director's assistant, We knew that you hired voice actors like her. We wouldn't have agreed to join this project. Who does she think she is? She's just a voice actress. Ben Davis is the prince of Asia. This is only day two. You better swap her out or we won't cooperate with the rest of the production. Don't be angry. The director's assistant chuckled and handed over a cigarette. If we find someone new, we would have wasted two days. How much does it cost to find someone new? The assistant said unceremoniously. You do as you deem fit. David, don't make things hard for all of us. Ben suddenly appeared behind them and said, We plan to concentrate on the market over here this year. I don't want to have a bad reputation here. But... Drop it. Ben Davis turned and walked into the studio. He wasn't trying to help April, but he was worried that she would say bad things about him to Winnie if her role was stripped. He was seriously concerned as to whether she would sow discord between him and Winnie. April was infuriated after her encounter with Ben and his assistant. She decided to buy supper to vent her frustrations. 
She brought a bowl of ramen, lamb, and beef skewers, squid strips, and grilled squid back to her hotel. When she arrived at her floor, she looked down to search for her room key. When she looked up, she saw Aaron pacing around in front of her door. Episode 290, You Tried to Seduce Him at Work? This morning, Erin made April angry. And at night, she was angry with Ben. She got angry when seeing any man now. She felt that men were the most annoying creatures in the world. All Erin thought about was visiting New Jersey with another woman, and he used work as an excuse. When she saw Erin, he saw her too. He also saw the food boxes she carried, about five of them. He remembered that Winnie had gone home earlier today, so that food was probably for just April. He knew that his woman had a greater appetite than other women. When she walked closer, Aaron saw the kebab that stuck out of the plastic bag in her hand. Then he couldn't help but knit his brow. You're gonna have a baby and your period is over half a month late. Yet still, you do know how to take care of yourself. All this is is junk food. He said, April felt so annoyed. Aren't you having fun with Kiera? She asked. Aaron guessed that April was jealous. He wanted her to be jealous so she wouldn't dare to irritate him with Ryan again. What are you doing here? April asked. Did you bring Dr. Henry here? I'm here to tell you that Dr. Henry is out of town for an exchange meeting. He'll be back in Rosewood City in a couple of days. I think he'll be there when you get back home. While speaking, Aaron fixed his eyes on her pretty face. He surely wouldn't tell her that he came here because he missed her so much. April felt speechless. Do you have to come here to tell me all about that? Why didn't you call? Aaron snorted coldly and said, I deleted your number long ago. You think I'd keep your number after what you did to me? You could have messaged me on WhatsApp then. April replied, I've dragged you into my blacklist. Can't you drag me out? How? I don't know how. I never disliked a person so much that I had to drag him or her into the blacklist. You were the first one, said Aaron expressionlessly. I didn't want to ask Marvin and the others about it. After all, they all think that we've broken off our relationship. His shameless words made April so angry that she even laughed. You know how to drag people into the blacklist, but don't know how to drag people out. Who would believe that? She thought. She took out the card key, opened the door, and said, All right, I already know that Dr. Henry won't come here. You can leave now. I'm hungry. Give me some of your food. Aaron pushed the door open and walked straight in. April didn't know what to say. Will he leave after he asked some food? She wondered. She admitted that she had been missing him a lot lately. However, he said that Jenica was like the pure moonlight in his heart, and that made her very unhappy. For that reason, she wanted him to suffer more. Why are you standing at the door? Hurry up and take out the food. Erin took the plastic bag out of her hand, opened it, and took out a skewer of beef, finishing it in two bites. It tasted awful, he said with dislike. Then he picked up another skewer and continued eating. April had only bought five skewers of grilled beef, and he finished four of them in one breath. Why did you eat so much if it's not good? She was beyond endurance. I'm too hungry. Why? Didn't your Kiera have a good meal with you? Could she be like you? She eats in small bites as she doesn't want to get fat. Unlike her, you eat as much as four adult males. Erin opened her noodles while speaking. April rubbed her forehead. She suddenly felt that Ben was actually quite nice. Even though he never ordered food for Winnie, he never ate Winnie's food either. Unlike him, Erin was... She let him eat and went to shower. Halfway through a shower, Aaron called from outside. I'm leaving. April was astonished. The bathroom door in the hotel had no lock, so she was originally worried that he would walk in uninvited. She was really sleepy. She wanted to go to bed after she showered, but she thought he would find an excuse to stay with her. She didn't expect him to leave so soon. Did he really not have any feelings for her anymore? He was acting so properly in front of her now. April was vexed as she dried and dressed. April was already feeling down. When she saw that there was only squid strips left on the table, she nearly vomited blood. She was furious. 
She had bought so much food, and all he left her were some strips of squid. How inconsiderate. She was starving. Did Aaron come over just to take revenge on her? She didn't know how long it would take for delivery services to reach her if she ordered food online now. Forget about it, she thought to herself. She was going to bear with her hunger and go to bed. After lying in bed for a while, the doorbell rang. She looked through the peephole to see a delivery man standing outside. When she opened the door, he said, Hello, miss. This is your bird's nest and moose cake. April was stunned. I didn't order this. I'm not sure about that. This is the correct address, the delivery man said. You are Miss Eisenberg? April nodded. It's correct, then. You're so pretty. You might be from an admirer. The man handed the food to her and left promptly. April shut the door behind her and opened the package. The bird's nest was contained in an elaborate porcelain bowl. The cake was pink heart-shaped mousse cake that was 13 inches across. It was delicately made, and it made her happy. It would make anyone happy. After a while, she dialed Aaron's number. What? A cold and hard voice answered the phone. I should be asking you that. Did you send the cake? April was nervous. She was also a little hopeful. Were you hoping it was Ryan? Of course it was me. Aaron said sarcastically. April bit her lip and she tried hard not to smile too widely. Do you know what cake you sent? It's heart-shaped. What? Aaron sounded surprised over the line. I was just worried that you would be too hungry to bear me a child. I told the shop to send any cake over. I didn't know they would send you a heart-shaped one. That's ridiculous. She found the situation ridiculous. Since you already received it, I can't do anything about it. I'll give them feedback not to be so careless in the future. Aaron hung up after that. April looked at her phone and looked over at the cake again. She couldn't help but smile. She had misunderstood him earlier. Now she couldn't bear to dig into such an exquisite cake. After a long debate with herself, she finally decided to succumb to the cake's temptation, and she stuck her spoon into the cake. It was smooth and velvety. She had plenty of cake in the past, but it was nothing compared to this. Out of curiosity, she looked up the bakery on the cake box online. She was shocked to find that the cake cost $12,800. That bastard a random cake cost him over $10,000. April smiled to herself as she ate the cake. She was planning to eat half of the cake, but now she was determined to finish the entire thing. She didn't want to let his good intentions get away. After she had her fill, she laid in bed, satisfied. She decided that she was going to bear that bastard Aaron a child as soon as possible. He treated her so well, even when they broke up. He was definitely a keeper. The next day, when April was lying on her bed and looking at her phone, she got a call from the director of Team Simon. Miss Eisenberg, I'm sorry, but I have to let you know that your work schedule has been moved to the middle of next month. Why? April asked with surprise. The director replied impatiently. How can you be so shameless enough to ask why? Don't you know who you've offended? Ben Davos is a superstar, and you actually tried to seduce him at work. If we had known that the voice actress Jennifer had recommended was so unprofessional, we wouldn't have picked you. However, as you've already worked for two days, and you're pretty good, we've only moved your schedule to the middle of next month, so you don't have to work together with Ben. April understood why and got so angry. Yesterday, she did worry that she might offend Ben. However, she also felt that he wouldn't be so narrow-minded because he was Winnie's boyfriend after all. But to her surprise, when did I seduce him? Director, I can't even confront him about it. He didn't do it. I just didn't. April felt humiliated. You're a voice actress and he is a superstar. How dare you demand to confront him? The director sounded very unfriendly. Ben is a superstar. Does he have a reason to frame you? I didn't do it. You can't act like this. You told me that I'm working at the end of this month, so I've asked my school for leave, and I've flown here. Now you're telling me that I need to come back next month? Are you jerking me around? We're in this business, so we need to follow the rules of this business. You're right. We voice actresses are insignificant, but please respect us. April made an utmost effort to fight for her rights. If you think it's inappropriate, feel free to do whatever you want. But you've already signed the contract, so if you quit, we won't cover your expenses, and you'll need to compensate for our losses. 
After all, if you quit, the past two days that we've spent on you would be wasted. April was infuriated. Some other companies had deducted her wages before when she worked for them. However, she had never been accused of seduction. The Simon people had taken the liberty of changing her schedule because their company was big and rich. She had to finish her work because otherwise she would need to pay them for their losses. That was so shameless. The most shameless one was Ben. She had had a good impression of him at first because he was incredibly handsome. However, he actually made up lies about her behind her back. The more she thought about it, the more uncomfortable she felt. She found Winnie's number as she really wanted to call her, but still she didn't do it. Winnie had already been in a very bad mood yesterday. If she complained about Ben to her, she would feel embarrassed. She might even get sadder. Besides, Winnie and Ben had known each other since high school, while she only had known her for about a year. Perhaps Winnie would tend to believe Ben more. April dropped her phone. At three o'clock in the afternoon, April headed straight to the studio at Simon. When she arrived, she saw Cal and Haley talking by the door. Seeing her, Cal gave her a glance with pity, then pushed the door open and walked into the studio. Haley turned back, smiled at her, and said, April, what are you doing here? As far as I know, your schedule's been changed, right? April narrowed her eyes and said, They switched my schedule with yours? Didn't you know? said Haley scornfully. That's because you tried to seduce Ben. I don't like your kind of people the most. You always pretend to be so virtuous. But in private, you do things like that. From this day on, I'll be teaching Ben voice acting. Episode 291 He was anxious to finally reunite with April. Do you really think I care about teaching him? April said angrily. She finally understood what it meant by never judge a book by its cover. She didn't understand why someone as handsome as he was would spread rumors like that about her. What are you doing here if you don't care? Haley pointed to the door behind her. You should buy a ticket home as soon as possible. There isn't any use, even if you go look for the director. You should have messed around with Ben. He's the biggest A-list star now. Although he's a singer, he has plenty of film and television projects on his plate as well. She laughed sarcastically and walked back into the recording studio. April knew that her words would bear little weight, especially when pitted against Ben's. But she had to try to defend herself. She would hate for the rumors that she tried to seduce Ben to spread all over the industry. It would drastically affect her reputation and her career. She waited for 45 minutes before Ben appeared with his assistant and his bodyguard. Ben? April walked over briskly towards him, but his bodyguard blocked her path immediately before she could draw clothes. When Ben saw her, he looked upset. He wondered what she had to say now. What's the matter? You accuse me falsely of trying to seduce you and ask the company to shift my schedule. What do you think the matter is? April laughed coldly. Ask yourself truthfully. Did I or did I not try to seduce you? Ben frowned, taken aback by her confrontation. His assistant, Thomas, looked upset. What's the matter with Simon? How could he allow her to confront Ben like this? I'm calling your director. This is outrageous. Thomas? Ben stopped him and looked at him. What did you tell the crew? Thomas said, I just told them that she was harassing you. I wanted them to rearrange her work time so that you won't have to bump into her while you're here. I didn't expect her to be so thick about it. What a shameless girl. Did I harass you? April glared at Ben. She didn't harass me, all right? Ben said to Thomas. Who explained things to the crew? Ask them to switch things back. Explained to them that it was a misunderstanding. We merely had a divergence of opinions while interpreting one of the characters in the game. I can tell them that, but I don't think that the schedule can be changed further. Thomas shrugged. The voice actor's already in the studio. We shouldn't be so fickle and careless. April was agitated. 
So, you do know that you shouldn't be so careless. How could you spread those rumors without getting to the bottom of things? It may be a small matter to you, but have you considered the impact on my reputation? Miss Eisenberg, can we please talk in private? Ben asked. Ben, I that will be necessary. Let's leave her be. Thomas looked indifferent. Ben looked at him with disapproval. He walked towards the window and lowered his voice. Miss Eisenberg, my assistant may be a little out of it. Although I might not be able to change the schedule now, I will make sure that I explain the entire situation to the crew. I won't tarnish your reputation one bit. I'm willing to compensate you for your return tickets, accommodation fees, and all other monetary losses as well. April pursed her lips in silence. Her face was clean and pretty. Please don't tell Winnie about this. I don't want her to misunderstand. Ben added, I don't care what you think of me, but I care about her a lot. I don't want to lose her. April paused to think before saying, I'm sorry. I've already told Winnie. Ben's beautiful features were suddenly contorted in an ugly manner. That's not nice of you to come between us like that. April paused for a few seconds and then asked, When did I sow division between you? You talked to her before you even figured out the truth. Didn't you think that she might misunderstand me? Ben looked at her with discontent, saying, Winnie's old friends are all fine. I didn't think that she'd become friends with someone like you. April gazed at him for a while, then smiled. Mr. Davos, in fact, I lied to you. I didn't tell Winnie what happened. I just wanted to know how you would react. Ben was a little stunned, and then he sighed in relief. However, now he was even unhappier. What's the point of that? I wanted to know what kind of person you are. April smiled and said, It turns out you have no class. Winnie has poor taste. Ben took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, I'm warning you. Don't talk nonsense in front of Winnie. Mr. Davis, you've sung a few songs and have become a big star, but don't think that everyone should be afraid of you. Said April, I can ruin your reputation with one word. Ben warned her, then turned and walked to his bodyguard and assistant. April felt that she had no reason to keep talking to a man like that. She didn't want to dub for the game anymore, and she wasn't afraid of breaking the contract. Before she had met Ben in person, she thought he was perfect. But now she really didn't like him. When she walked past Ben, Thomas glared at her with dislike, then turned to say to Ben in Korean, When you two talked alone in that corner, I thought you fancied her. Ben responded in Korean in a lazy tone. How could it be possible? That kind of woman can be seen everywhere. Don't say that. She's pretty. But if young mistress knew, she'd be unhappy. Thomas replied and laughed. Don't disappoint young mistress. She's longing for you. Ben smiled and stayed silent. April, who had walked only a few steps away, was now shocked. What young mistress? Did Ben have another girlfriend in Korea? His assistant had said that, and he hadn't denied it. April couldn't be sure if he was with that young mistress, but their relationship was certainly not normal. They might be flirting with each other. His assistant called her young mistress, so that woman definitely had a remarkable family background. Was it between him and Winnie, then? Was he with Winnie while flirting with another woman? No wonder he always acted so secretly. April had never been angrier. She felt like she was the one who had been betrayed. Winnie had done so much for him. She came to Rosewood City alone, angering her parents. She strived to enter the entertainment industry because she believed that as long as she became a star, she could be with Ben. What now? Winnie's love and her youth had been wasted on that man. How could such an awful man even exist? April really wanted to go back and beat him up. For her own career, she didn't let herself do that. Ben had so many fans... If she attacked him, his fans might find her and kill her. She waited for the elevator. The elevator door opened and two men walked out. April didn't pay attention to them. When she brushed past the two men, one of them suddenly turned and saw her lowering her eyes. Her skin was snow white and that made her look like she was of mixed blood. Her cheeks slightly bulged because she was angry. As the elevator door slowly closed, her face disappeared from his sight. What's wrong? His friend asked, She is 
Jeffrey's eyes narrowed and he spat out the question with a thick foreign accent. His friend looked at the recording studio and said, She's probably a voice actor. Jeffrey grabbed his arm and said agitatedly, Do you know her name? How would I know that? The company belongs to my dad. Although I participated in the production of this game, I'm not really involved in the post-production work. I can help you ask around, though. His friend was astonished to see him this way. He was usually aloof, and his gaze was always cold and steely. But he was overflowing with emotion and excitement now. He had known Moy Luixi for a while now, and he always maintained a poker face. Do you know her, or have you fallen in love with her at first sight? Jeffrey looked at him emotionlessly now. After a while, his lips quivered. Find her information immediately. His friends looked at him with his mouth agape. He didn't seem like he wanted to answer his question. As son of Simon CEO, Morris Lewis, it was a piece of cake for him to find the information he needed. After a phone call, within 15 minutes, the CEO secretary walked over to them while they were still touring the technical department. Boss, I found the girl that you're looking for. She's called April Eisenberg. She's one of the voice actresses that were recently signed. April Eisenberg. Jeffrey was muttering her name softly, and his hard face was suddenly filled with emotion. He never thought that someone he had heard about since he was a child would appear in front of him so casually. At first, he thought the girl resembled his mother, but there were plenty of people in the world who looked like each other. He was just checking to be sure. He didn't expect to be right. After he entered adulthood, Melissa had told him he had an older sister and a disappointing father. He had never planned on reconciling with his dad, but he still yearned to meet his sister. He asked for the Eisenberg family's address from Melissa, but when he got there, Kenneth was already in jail for outrage of modesty. He was ashamed that his father was a criminal, and April was nowhere to be found then. At the same time, Melissa had met with an accident, and he had to rush back. It was years before he was back again after completing school overseas. He didn't expect to bump to his sister the moment he landed in New Jersey. Melissa would be elated if she found out. Jeffrey clenched his fist tightly. He was anxious to finally reunite with April. He had to hold himself back from doing anything impulsive, though. April didn't even know of his existence, after all. He drew in a long breath. Can you tell me more about her situation? The secretary looked at him in confusion. Although this guy was young, it was rare for his genius young master to respect anyone like this. He must be someone important. Master Lewis, you may not be familiar with this since you've been abroad. April is infamous here. Her father is a criminal for committing acts of indecency. They've been in the spotlight for a while now. Jeffrey looked downcast. He detested all mentions of Kenneth. He had already had stony expression, and he instantly sent chills down the secretary's back with his domineering aura. Go on. Morris gestured with his chin. The secretary nodded. Well, speaking of April, her life could be written into a novel. She's very gifted in the voice acting industry. It was a pity when her father landed in jail. She broke up with her fiancé, Isaac Davidson, too. Oh, right. Isaac took over the Eisenberg's family film company and renamed it the Magma Group afterward. Rumor has it that he went around making sure April would never get another gig in the industry again after that. Old light. Wasn't she his fiance? That man was probably aiming at her family business. The assistant chuckled. <laughs> That's what people said. After that, April dropped out of school and went to Rosewood City since she had no other choice. She's studying in Langford College of Communication now, and she's Aaron Bennett's girlfriend. Who's Aaron Bennett? Jeffrey interrupted him coldly once again. Based on what Isaac had done, he had no good feelings for his sister's boyfriend at all. The president of the Splingo Group? He founded Splingo single-handedly? His mother is the president of the YCC Corporation, and his father is from a military family. Anyway... Even our chairman doesn't dare to look down on him. I guess he's pretty old then. Jeffrey felt even more annoyed. It seemed that his sister was living a poor life indeed. Her boyfriend was actually an old man. Her taste was as poor as Melissa's. A girl and her mother could be exactly alike. Um, actually, he's even younger than me. 
said the assistant shamefacedly. He's only 30 and is considered the youngest financer in the city. Isn't he old? Jeffrey responded with a big frown. April hadn't even had her 24th birthday yet. He's a little old for you, said the assistant, but I think for April he's fine. Women like to be with men who are a couple years older than they are. However, Aaron is very handsome, so it's reasonable for girls to like him. Handsome men are fickle in love, Jeffrey commented. You're more handsome than any man. Are you fickle in love, too? Morris said while trying to keep himself from laughing out loud. Do not compare me with that kind of man. Jeffrey glanced at him blandly. Morris didn't know how to respond. How did Aaron offend you? Did he steal your wife? He wondered. The assistant smiled and continued. All in all, Aaron's pretty nice. He unbanned April, allowing her to work as a voice actress again. Earlier, a video of Kenneth threatening his students emerged online, and April was affected again. It even influenced Flinga. They lost over a billion. But still, Aaron solved the rumor problem for April and never left her. But I heard that they broke up a couple of days ago. Scrum, said Jeffrey through his clenched teeth. His sister was so silly that she was fooled by indecent men over and over again. However, since he had found her, he wouldn't let anybody bully her again. From now on, he would treat her like a princess. If anyone dared to hurt her, he would kill them. Morris couldn't help but add, He's not exactly scum. He has lost over a billion, after all. That's a large number. Is a billion a big sum of money? Jeffrey threw the question back blandly. Morris was speechless. He was arrogant, as always. The assistant gave a bitter smile. Nowadays, many young people were arrogant. Since she's working for your company, I guess she'll come here every day, right? Jeffrey asked. In that case, he might be able to see her again today or tomorrow. There's another thing, the assistant hurriedly replied. I was around just now and I heard that April tried to seduce Ben Davis at work. Ben's assistant told the team director about that, so the director changed her schedule. She won't come back here until the middle of next month. Who's Ben Davos? Jeffrey couldn't help but radiate coldness from his entire body. He's a singer that debuted in Korea. He's super popular now. Morris answered him. He's quite good-looking and young. 23, I think. Jeffrey lowered his head and searched him up on the phone. The search page showed many photos of Ben and pulled up his information as well. He took two looks and chuckled. Why would anyone try to seduce a guy like him? He doesn't look manly at all. It's impossible. Morris blurted out, Why are you defending her? Who is she to you exactly? Someone no one should bother. Jeffrey replied, Is Ben still here in the building? The assistant swallowed nervously and nodded. He's in the recording studio. Jeffrey recalled the studio they had walked by. He lowered his face and walked towards the door of the technical department. Morris caught up with him quickly. Are you going to look for Ben? He's a spokesperson that my father's company signed. Jeffrey ignored him completely and walked briskly into the elevator and arrived at the door of the recording studio. He kicked the wooden door open swiftly. The director's assistant recognized Morris immediately and greeted him. Master Morris, what are you doing here? Jeffrey swept into the room and his gaze landed on Ben, who was wearing a headset. He walked over and Thomas rushed forward to stop him. Stop right there. Who are you? How dare you barge in here like that? Jeffrey grabbed his collar and pulled him forward. He glared at him menacingly. The director's assistant said flustered, This is Ben's assistant. So, you're from Korea? No wonder you have a plastic face. Jeffrey said with disgust and then shoved Thomas aside angrily. Although he was tall and skinny, he had long arms and strong muscles, and his shove pushed Thomas all the way to the wall into the recording studio. Ben was already in a foul mood as his voice recording wasn't going too well and he was annoyed that he was being interrupted like that. He slammed his headset onto the table and yelled, What's the matter with your company? Anyone can barge in here now? Are you going to do something about it? You're Ben Davos, right? I heard that April tried to seduce you. Jeffrey walked in front of him and glared at him. Based on your looks, why would such a pretty girl like April be attracted to you at all? Aren't you being a little too conceited? April again? Ben was getting annoyed. I already said that I was going to make things clear. Did she find someone to take out revenge on me? I don't care who the hell you are. 
Please get out right now, or else I don't know what I'll do to you. Well, I'm going to find out what you're going to do then, Jeffrey said mockingly. He grinned smugly. Ben looked at the man in front of him. Although he looked menacing, based on his appearance and the way he was dressed, he could tell that he was young, perhaps even younger than he was. Young little brats nowadays don't know respect. Audacious, Ben thought. Ben looked around the man and yelled, Are you guys going to chase him away? If not, I think we should end our partnership. Don't be angry, Ben, the director's assistant rushed in. He had a headache trying to figure out how to deal with the intruder. He was a guest of the CEO's son, after all. Master Morris, what do you think? Come on, Lewis. Morris chuckled helplessly. Jeffrey didn't look at him, but looked around the studio instead. Then he said coldly, It's a joke that a singer is doing voice recording. Morris, let your father know you should change him out. Morris didn't know what to do. It would be easier if the company was his. However, his father owned the company. Russell Ben was a super popular singer. The promotional film and style design had both been done, and his final makeup photo had been punished online. If he replaced him now, his father would not agree. Ben saw him as an impetuous young man. He laughed. Are you out of your mind? Do you know who I am? Do you know how much time and money Simon spent to get me here? Assistant Mark, I'm not going to do the voice acting today. I'll never come back here unless you give me a formal apology. Please don't. Frightened, Assistant Mark quickly gave Morris an eye signal. Jeffrey turned to Morris and said, Replace him. I'll introduce a Hollywood A-list male star to you. Assistant Mark paused in shock. Where was this crazy friend of Mr. Lewis from? He was way too arrogant. However, Morris's eyes glowed. Are you sure? I'm sure. Jeffrey nodded. Okay, we'll replace him. Morris immediately made the decision. Assistant Mark nearly knelt on the ground. Ben heard that as he was leaving and his veins began throbbing in his temples. Since he had become famous, he had never been humiliated like that. A Hollywood A-list male star. I think you're talking idiotic nonsense. Good. Since you broke the contract first, don't blame us for being unfriendly. After saying that, he walked away angrily with large strides. Thomas picked up his bag, then turned back, pointed at Morris, and said, We won't let you get away with this. After giving the warning, he quickly followed Ben. Assistant Mark buried his head in his arms. He nearly collapsed. Mr. Lewis, you've created a big problem this time. Ben has tens of millions of fans. If he says one word about Simon out there, we'll be overwhelmed by verbal abuse from his fans. Our new game hasn't even been released yet. This will bring us a great negative influence. Besides, Ben is such a superstar. Who can possibly replace him? Didn't my friend just tell you? An A-list male star from Hollywood. Morris pointed at Jeffrey. Relax. I'll give you my word. I'll do what I said. Jeffrey responded coldly. Mark paused briefly. He did not believe Jeffrey. But he was indeed shaken by his determined tone. That's true. That's true. But it's inappropriate for us to replace him for no reason, isn't it? We're the ones who did wrong. No matter how we explain it, we asked Ben to accept our offer repeatedly back in the beginning. Morris frowned, as he didn't know what to do. Jeffrey abruptly said, I remember I saw that man, named Ben, walk into the studio at four o'clock. Was he late, or was that the right time? Assistant Mark's eyes glowed. He was an hour late every day. So the dubbers that we hired to teach him always got off work at one or two in the morning. Jeffrey's cold face showed a meaningful smile as he said, Isn't that the perfect reason for you to replace him? As a first-line star, he's late for work, and he turned up his nose to others. Even the most patient company can't stand that. Don't just stand here. Go talk to your publicity department and tell them to release the news with the name of your company. You can also bring some great publicity to yourself by doing that. People will certainly talk about it and choose sides. However, when you've signed the contract with an A-list Hollywood male star, you'll be able to slap Ben in the face. An international star versus an Asian singer, people will know which one is worth more. Yes, yes, I'm doing it right now. 
Assistant Mark hurriedly nodded and then started arranging everything in haste. Episode 293 Mr. Bennett, you really go out for Miss Eisenberg, don't you? Morris looked back at Jeffrey. Aren't you a cunning friend? Anyway, you haven't even told me who April is. You'll find out eventually. Do take care of her when she's in the recording studio next time. Don't tell her about me yet. Jeffrey smiled. I've decided to study at Langford Academy next semester. Morris was stunned. Don't joke around with me. Langford is trash compared to where you're studying now. It's fine. I've already mastered all the knowledge my school has to offer anyway. Jeffrey was still grinning. He was excited to see his sister's face when she saw him for the first time. After getting back to the hotel, April started angrily packing her luggage. She was so angry. She didn't even want to stay in New Jersey a minute longer. And she took the first train back home. After the train departed, she posted a status update on her social media account. There are too many unfriendly voice actors in this world. Aaron was waiting for a flight at the airport when he saw her status update. He frowned and dialed her number immediately. He was anxious and he blurted out when the line connected. Who bullied you? I thought you said you deleted my phone number and blocked my social media account. Why are you still showing me any concern? We already broke up. April said unceremoniously. In his moment of haste, he had forgotten about their breakup. I asked Kira for your number when I went back last night. And she taught me how to unblock you online. Seems like it worked. Aaron continued. It's rare for you to post a status update. I'm just curious who bullied you. I might send him a gift. April was annoyed. Stop talking to me. I saw your photo. You're taking the train? Aaron asked. Yep. Aaron was frustrated. You're not going to get back to Rosewood City until the wee hours. The train ride is over ten hours long. You're sitting on a hard seat, right? What's the matter with you? Why didn't you just buy a high-speed rail or plane ticket? April was helpless. A last-minute plane ticket would cost me two thousand dollars. And the high-speed rail ticket would cost over $600. I thought about it, and I didn't think it was worth it. And that's why I'm taking the train. I only paid 100 bucks for a hard seat. I'm not in a rush anyway. I don't have to spend the night on the train either. I'll be back around midnight. Aaron was furious. How could his woman end up taking a hard seat train? If you're taking the train, you should have at least bought a bunk. It would only cost 100 more. I thought you had three million dollars. Why do you have to be so stingy with yourself? No matter what, she had been born with a silver spoon in her mouth up until she was 20 years old. He had spoiled her previously for a period as well. She shouldn't have to endure such hardship anymore. She seemed to be addicted to suffering. April, this is the reason why your period is so late. You haven't been taking care of yourself at all. You should pay attention to your own health more. Get off the train now and go take the high-speed rail. I'll wire you the money. It's fine. It's too much trouble. I would need to go to the high-speed rail station, and the time might not match as well. Don't worry. I'm young, and I'm definitely going to be able to bear your child. April hung up after she said her piece. Before long, Winnie called her. What's going on? What happened? Didn't Ben take special care of you? April sighed. Ben did take special care of her. It's difficult to explain. I'll tell you more about it when I'm back. Don't ask Ben about it. All right. Thankfully, Winnie didn't ask any further questions. April looked at her number and sighed. If it was only about Ben's assistant framing her, switching her schedule with Haley's, and harming her reputation, she may not tell Winnie. However, it was actually that Ben might be with another woman. She felt that she had to let Winnie know. Winnie knew nothing about it. If she had really wasted her years on a man like that, it would be a real shame. To avoid long-term suffering, she had to be decisive. Besides, what Ben did was awful. She struggled for a short while. The more she thought about it, the more strongly she felt that Ben had a problem. So she called Jennifer. I hope I didn't interrupt you, she said. No, I just finished the scene. I'm resting now, Jennifer said. I'll call you and ask what happened. I saw your Instagram post. I need you for that job. Who's troubling you? That's not important anymore. I want to ask you about something. April lowered her voice and said, You've worked for quite a long time in the entertainment circle. Do you know about Korean artists? 
Do their agents always watch them so strictly that they can't even call their boyfriends or girlfriends? Like they only call their girlfriends or boyfriends every three or four days? And they can't see their girlfriends or boyfriends in a year or even half a year? Jennifer chuckled and replied with great interest. How come I smell the lock foster blossom? Just to answer my question, April got anxious. Last year, I worked with a first line Korean male star for three months. See, I know something about them. Their companies do manage them strictly. After work, we can go have some dinner, but they can only return to the hotel with their assistant. They rarely actually eat dinner, though. They usually only have some fruit or salad because they need to maintain the perfect body shape. But that's only if you gain weight easily. However, it's not as bad as you just said. I often see that Korean male stars call his friends in the corner, laughing into his phone. His assistant rarely said a word about that. When there was no work to do, he sometimes spent time with his phone on location, too. The more she heard, the deeper April's heart sank. So, no matter how strict their companies are with them, they still have personal time for relationships. Of course. Jennifer said. Maybe they don't have lots of personal time, but their companies won't watch them even when they're sleeping. Look at those popular boy bands. They are managed the most strictly. They're young and most of their fans are female. Some of their fans may outgrow them when they have girlfriends. But still, some reporters can occasionally snap photos of them being with some girls. That one you talked about just now who can't see his girlfriend in a year? I guess he's just playing with that girl. There's a good chance that he's cheated on her. April's heart sank even deeper. That sounded exactly like Ben. In fact, she had been feeling a little strange since Wendy first told her about her relationship with Ben. Seriously, that was not how people maintained a relationship. No matter how busy and tired he was, he didn't even have time to text his girlfriend good night and good morning. Then... Do you think some male stars will want to be with rich and powerful women for better careers? Your father used to run a film company, so I guess you've seen a lot of that. Women can do that, and so can men, said Jennifer. Don't be fooled by the glitz and glamour of some of the male celebrities. They may be worshipped as idols by the public, but a lot of them have sugar moments. Some people don't have the luck or the grit, so they will do anything to become famous. There are many men who abandon their original partners after becoming wealthy and important. They have all sorts of affairs with crew members. Jennifer sounded agitated as she said these things. She continued. When I first debuted, there were many executives, investors, and directors who wanted to go to bed with me in exchange for popularity and opportunities. I refused all of them and relied on my own hard work to make it to where I am today. I've been around this industry for so many years. I've seen all sorts of things. The good and the bad. There are many dirty things in this industry. Trust me, you can't even imagine the worst of them. April sighed. Even in the voice acting industry, not to mention the screen acting industry. She had experienced many accounts of sexual harassment because she had a pretty face. Winnie would be devastated if she found out about this. The high school sweetheart that she was in love with was nowhere to be found anymore. Thanks, Jennifer. April put down her phone and stared out the window in a daze. Not knowing how much time had passed, someone suddenly patted her on the shoulder. She was jolted from her daze, and a train attendant was staring at her. Are you April? She nodded. The attendant said, Agent, purchased a bump ticket for you on this train service. Please follow me. April was stunned. The auntie in the front of her suddenly said, Who is she? You guys are inviting her there yourself? The superiors ordered us to. The attendant gave an awkward smile. Eisenberg, this way, please. Let me help you with your luggage. Okay. April was stunned. She figured that it was Aaron's arrangement. He had expressed his strong disapproval of her travel arrangements earlier over the phone. She really had to give it to this guy. He could find her even when she was on a train. She followed the attendant and entered a booth. It was a four-bunk carriage, but she was the only passenger there. There were oranges, bananas, and all sorts of fruit laid on the table. Although it wasn't much, it felt like a world of difference to her. There won't be any other passengers joining you on this ride. Please make yourself comfortable. We will deliver lunch, dinner, and supper to you later. The attendant explained before she walked away. At the airport, Aaron received a call from the train company, and they informed him that they had made the due arrangements that he had requested. 
He breathed a sigh of relief, and he prepared to board the plane in peace. Kiara couldn't help but laugh at him. Mr. Bennett, you really go all out for Miss Eisenberg, don't you? You asked me to put on an act with you and treated me to a trip to New Jersey and all. You were so worried about her sitting on a hard seat. It's not even that big of a deal. If I remember correctly, you used to take trains like that all the time when you were serving in the military. How could she compare to me? Aaron grunted. I'm a man. I can take hardships. Kara sighed. She was envious of April. It was a blissful thing to be loved by a man like that. She was clear on the fact that she would not interfere with something that didn't belong to her. Mr. Bennett, I've got it. Marvin walked over with his phone. I heard that Miss Eisenberg had some conflict with Ben. He's a very popular singer in Asia right now. Aaron frowned. How dare he have any conflict with my woman? Doesn't he know that she's my girlfriend? Marvin cleared his throat. The... <laughs> The public knows that you two have broken up. Episode 294. She desperately wanted to lean on his chest. Aaron knitted his brows tightly. He didn't know that people were spreading that kind of rumor. Did he harass her? Does he think that he can do things to her because I've broken up with her? She's gorgeous, after all. He said, Um, not exactly. Ben claimed that April tried to seduce him. Hearing that, Aaron burst out in laughter as if he had just heard a joke. That was the most hilarious joke that I've heard this year. She was in a relationship with me. How could she possibly take a liking to a crappy singer like that? Marvin really wanted to tell his boss that Ben was pretty handsome, but to prevent Aaron from losing his temper, he nodded and responded, That's right, I guess there's some other reason. What reason could it be? I can tell for sure that Ben tried to seduce her, but failed. And then with both anger and shame, he smeared her. Aaron ordered, Contact Simon right now. My ex-girlfriend was wrong. They must give an explanation or they'll be my, Aaron's, enemy. That Ben harassed my girlfriend. I won't let him get away with it so easily. Marvin felt a little speechless. Ex-girlfriend, he thought. As her ex-boyfriend, you really mind a lot of her business. Mr. Bennett, I don't think you have actual evidence of Ben harassing Miss Eisenberg, right? Marvin asked. All this is just your conjecture. He continued in his head. April's beauty is the strongest proof. Aaron answered without hesitation. Kira felt speechless. She finally understood what partiality really meant. Marvin smiled bitterly and said, Mr. Bennett, we're going to be late if we don't board now. I'll make arrangements back in Rosewood City, all right? It's inconvenient for me to call them on a plane. All right. Aaron heard the airport announcer call his name as well. Two hours later, the plane landed in Rosewood City. Marvin switched on his phone, and the news about Ben immediately popped out. He opened the news, spent a while reading it, and then said to Aaron, Mr. Bennett, I'm afraid you don't need to talk to Simon anymore. Not long after we got on the plane, Simon announced on Instagram that Ben Davos is no longer the spokesman of their game, and that they'll resign the contract with him unilaterally. The reason is that he was arrogant and late every day during the dubbing work. Because of him, the other dubbers had to work for a longer time. Aaron raised his eyebrows. What happened? Did the owner Simon realize I care about April? Is that the reason why they terminated the contract immediately? Marvin felt a little awkward about how his boss gave himself the credit. Kiara joined the conversation. I don't think it's possible, Mr. Bennett. You have no idea how many fans Ben has. He has both female and male fans, and some of his female fans are rather crazy. Also, it's the first time that he has endorsed a game. I guess Simon has put quite a lot of effort into it. They couldn't possibly terminate the contract with Ben without even giving you a phone call. Now, almost everyone in show business wants to work with him. I heard that some even offered a hundred million for him to play a part in a film. Aaron sneered scornfully. He offered a hundred million to a singer to play a part in a film. Are they out of their minds? Don't they need any acting skills? Marvin sighed. He's popular and handsome. And he's young. 
He has countless fans. Miss Gear is right. What Simon did was rather risky. Now they have terminated their deal with Ben. So who's going to be their new spokesperson? Currently, only a few stars can compete with him. Not to mention the fact that Ben has already finished the advertising and the final makeup photo. By replacing him, Simon is going to take a serious loss. I thought that even if you called them yourself, we'd have to come up with some ideas to make them terminate their cooperation with Ben. Kara looked at the phone and said, Ben has released a statement as well. He's saying that the young master of Simon Group and his friend walked in during one of his recording sessions and made a scene. The company has already found a Hollywood star to replace him, and that's why they decided to break the contract with him. Marvin remarked, The news has invited a high amount of public attention. Kira laughed. Doesn't look so simple. Find out exactly what happened. Aaron ordered Marvin. Something was not right. How did Simon break ties with Ben before he had even interfered? April saw the news on the train as well. She was stunned. She had been so angry in the morning, and she had almost blurted things online while cursing Ben in her head. She wished that people would see him for what he was. She didn't expect him to be involved in such a conflict moments later. She was shocked that Simon was the first one who had published a defaming statement. They had treasured him like a gem while she was there. What exactly had happened when she was gone? Why did Simon terminate his contract like that? It was miraculous. She wasn't naive enough to believe that they did it for her. Seemed like the public had opinions about both parties now. Ben's fans and keyboard warriors were completely on his side. And some parts of the public were on his side, too. The internet was filled with comments. She have already produced evidence that Ben was always late for his sessions. You could let things slide if he was only late once. But it's preposterous that he go into work late every day. More than an hour, too. He is a newbie at voice acting, and it's reasonable that he would have to take things slowly at the beginning. But he's showing an improper attitude being late and all. How can he implicate his other colleagues like that? How inconsiderate. Another comment said, Since the company paid so much for him to be the spokesperson, he should have cooperated with them as best he could. I like some of Ben's new songs, but I guess he's just one of those sell-out artists. I find him repulsive, to be honest. You should be humble and stay grounded. Stop being so arrogant. There are plenty of other popular singers other than him. Look at how hard-working they are. An actor commented, I support Ben Davos unconditionally. It's obvious that the company dished him after finding another star to replace him. Shameless. April was reading all the threads on her way back. She was extremely curious and made a call to another voice actor, Cal Brown. Cal Brown said, I'm not sure what happened either. I saw the young master of Simon barge into the studio when I was recording. It made quite a scene, but I didn't leave my booth. I didn't want to invite trouble for myself. I heard they were switching him out after that. April made sense of things now. She planned to thank the young master of Simon the next time she met him. No matter which side had the favor of public's opinion, there was no doubt that Ben was in trouble now. Marvin heard about what had happened in the evening and reported back to Aaron immediately. I think this thing has got to do with that mysterious friend of the young master of Simon. I heard he bumped into April coincidentally at the company, and he had a big reaction afterward. When he saw that she was bullied, he decided to take action. I heard he has quite a remarkable background, too. He pulled in a Hollywood A-lister to replace Ben. He wanted to punch Marvin after hearing about this chain of events. Are you sure you didn't make this up? Absolutely. Marvin swore. This is what I heard from the people inside. I'm telling you everything they told me. Aaron crossed his arms. His eyebrows were furrowed, and his mouth was turned into a big frown. He had never expected his woman to be targeted by some other man when she left the city to do a dubbing job. That mysterious man seemed to be rather powerful. He had easily found an A-list male Hollywood star to make the best of the situation, and Simon even offended Ben for him. Who on earth was he? It seemed that he was not at the same level as Isaac and Marvin. Do you know who that person is? I've asked around, but no one from Simon knows. The people who have seen him all described him as very cold, 
handsome man with sharp eyes. Marvin received Aaron's poisonous arrow-like glare before he could finish. Did I ask you to describe him? Aaron asked coldly. My bad. Marvin slapped his own mouth. Aaron said in a deep voice, Contact Simon, ask them to replace April. We can't let her go back to New Jersey in case she runs into that person. Miss Eisenberg will get angry if she knows, won't she? said Marvin. Besides, didn't you say you wouldn't intervene in her work? Aaron crossed his arms before his chest and said with a vigilant look in his eyes, For my lifelong happiness, I have no choice but to do it. He had to destroy every man who might go after his woman before they made a move. Four o'clock in the morning, in the train station. The train was behind schedule, but had finally arrived at the station. The train was supposed to arrive at Rosewood City Station at one o'clock, but it stopped on the way for all sorts of reasons and was a whole three hours late. April sighed. Thankfully, Erin had arranged a sleeping bed for her, or she would have been exhausted. She really underestimated how far behind schedule a train could be. When she dragged her suitcase out of the station, a large group of people surrounded her, holding boards with station names, yelling about the prices. April didn't dare to take that kind of ride. She ignored those people, lowered her head, and walked straight forward. Some people followed her for a couple of meters and then gave up, but a man kept following closely behind her, saying, Pretty girl, where are you going? I'll give you a ride. It's cheap. I'll give you a discount. I've told you that someone's coming to pick me up. April walked faster. There's no one. I'm telling you, you can't get a taxi in this place. That man wouldn't give up. April ignored him, but walked faster. Suddenly, she bumped into the person in front of her. She raised her head in pain. Under the light of the moon and stars, Aaron stood in front of her with a big frown. His body was straight and sturdy like a tree. She gave a start, and then her uneasy heart was suddenly comforted. That close to him, she sensed the familiar scent from his chest. Tiredness suddenly overwhelmed her. She so desperately wanted to lean on his chest. Aaron didn't look at her, but coldly stared at the man and said, Are you going to force her into your car, or are you planning to do something else? The man was frightened by the strong, tall Aaron. He took a few steps backward, then hurriedly forced his face into a smile, saying, Brother, is she your girlfriend? I'm sorry, I thought no one was here to pick her up. I just wanted to give her a ride and earn some money. After all, it's pretty unsafe for a girl to be alone so late at night. They'd be safer if there were fewer people like you, said Aaron in a cold voice. Go away, now. That man took a deep, angry breath. He wanted to fight Aaron, but sensing the vibe from him, he flinched turned and left grumpily. April sighed in relief and said in a sincere voice, Thank you. Aaron's face was still tightened into a serious expression. I don't even know what to say to you. I told you to take the high-speed train or the plane, yet you insisted on saving that tiny sum of money. Do you know what kind of danger a single woman might have to face at the train station so late at night? And you're so gorgeously dressed. Do you know how to keep a low profile? Episode 295 Aren't You a Professional Surrogate Mother? April lowered her head without saying a word. Her train had been delayed, and bumping into that man had been a bummer, too. She was not in a great mood. Aaron lowered his gaze to look at her. Her lashes were fluttering, and they tugged at his heartstrings. He was a complete fool in love. He wanted to hold her close in his arms and kiss her with passion. She was really asking for a scolding. She didn't know how to take care of herself at all. No sense of safety awareness. Come along. Aaron was as proud as a peacock, taking brisk strides forward. April was stunned and dragged her suitcase to catch up. Aren't you going to help me with my luggage? Aaron looked coldly at her. Aren't you very strong? Do you still need help from me? April followed behind him with annoyance. Before long, he had stopped in front of a black Volkswagen. The car model looked like a Passat. He had never driven such a cheap car before. 
this car. No one must find out about our little arrangement. I had to sneak out with this cheap car by myself. Aaron took her luggage from her hands and threw it into the back seat. He quickly climbed into the driver's seat afterwards. April looked around them to make sure there was no one watching them before she got into the car. Something was not right. This isn't a Passat, is it? Who said that it was? This is a luxury class Phaeton. Aaron continued. I switched out the nameplate to keep a low profile. April was speechless. He called a luxury Phaeton a cheap car. Had he considered her feelings at all? Someone who couldn't even afford a car? After we have a baby, you can have this car. Aaron grinned. Great. Now he was gifting her the cheap car. If you don't want it, I can get you a Passat instead. Aaron chuckled in amusement. April glared at him. Her eyes were bright and clear. It seemed as if she was playing coy with him. Aaron suddenly had the urge to kiss her pink and juicy lips passionately. Without thinking much, he actually did it. He leaned over and April noticed it. Her eyelashes were fluttering now. What are you doing kissing me? Should you be kissing Kira instead? Isn't she your moon and your star? Aaron stopped midway as he leaned in. His eyes were dark and his voice hoarse. I've asked Dr. Henry and he thinks that there might be a chance of conception even during your safe period. I think we should treasure every encounter. He planted his kiss domineeringly before she could say anything. The two of them kissed with fervor, as if they hadn't kissed each other in ages. He was originally going in for a peck, but now he had completely lost control. He couldn't help but ravish her lips with his own. April's lips were sore from the kiss, but every time she tried to open her mouth to protest, his tongue would find its way into her mouth to silence her. She hadn't been kissed by him like this in so long. April's mind was a blur. She had missed this. Badly. She quickly forgot about Esma and her reasons as well. It was just the two of them now, and they both wanted it to last as long as possible. All it took was a spark to light this fire. Aaron's hands were roving her body now, and April was panting urgently. They knew that a kiss wasn't enough to satisfy them. You want it. Aaron touched her aroused secret garden and opened his mouth slightly. His voice had turned dry, and fire burned in his eyes. Seeing what was on the tips of his fingers, April's face reddened immediately. The rosy color on her cheeks was so breathtakingly beautiful, even in the darkness. She opened and closed her mouth shyly, but could not say one word. Aaron violently pulled his own collar. He felt that if he kept holding it off like this, he'd be sick again. However, he couldn't do it with her right there, as there were quite a few policemen on duty near the train station. Let's go to the hotel. I can tell you for sure that we might be able to make a baby tonight. Aaron started the car right away. April opened her mouth. She wanted to say no. But her body longed for him as well. As he drove the car out of the station, the parking timer reminded Aaron that he had parked at the station for four hours. April was shocked. You waited at the station for four hours? She asked. Aaron wanted to explain, but this time he realized that he couldn't find any appropriate response. So, in anger, he said, Of course. I came here at 12 because I don't want anything bad to happen to the woman who's going to bear me a child. The train was supposed to arrive at one, yet I waited until four. April's heart immediately turned soft. She had been hesitant, but now she had made up her mind. Whether Esma would find out or not, she wanted to be with him tonight. Aaron took ten minutes to find a five-star hotel nearby, booked a suite, and then brought April upstairs. It was late at night. No one else was using the elevator. Aaron pressed April against the wall and started kissing her. April was shy, but as no one else was there, she put her arms around his waist. When they walked out of the elevator, Aaron had his arm around her. On their way to the room, Aaron stopped a few times to kiss her. They could have quickly found the room, but in the end, they took a couple of minutes to find it. When the door opened, April felt a shadow descending on her, and then her entire body was pressed into Aaron's chest. She didn't even get a chance to see the room clearly. In the private room... Neither of them tried to squelch their desire. They both wanted it so badly, they merged into one before even reaching the bed. 
April put her arms around Aaron's neck and raised her head to welcome his passionate kisses. Aaron was more aggressive than ever. April was also more excited than usual. The first time soon ended, but before long, Aaron started the second time with her on the bed. This time, it lasted for a long time. The quilt was thrown to the floor and half of the sheets slid off the bed. When it ended, April was exhausted. However, when Aaron carried her into the bathroom to take a shower, they did it again in there. When he carried her out, the sky was already turning bright in the east. April laid on his chest, deeply satisfied. It was the first time that she had slept so well since they had broken up. Aaron felt the same. These days, he was trying to punish her, but surprisingly, he gained something else. Normally, his woman had never had sex with him so excitedly. Also, they had done it three times. That was a new record. His woman seemed to have developed some strength after breaking up with him. Aaron held April and fell asleep with satisfaction. He didn't know how long he slept, but when he woke up, he was alone on the bed. He sat up abruptly and looked around the room. April had already left. The clothes that she had thrown on the floor were gone. He only found a few long hairs of hers in the bathroom to prove that what had happened last night wasn't a dream. So, she ran after using him? Aaron looked at his phone. It was already noon. He quickly dialed April's number. Is something the matter? April's voice was calm and collected. Aaron was furious. She was like this in the morning. She was hugging him, wrapped around him like a vine. Either that or she was sitting on his lap, moaning his name and kissing him back fervently. Damn. He felt a heat building in his pelvis just thinking about it. What do you think is the matter? Aaron said grumpily. April, are you ignoring me after our affair last night? April sounded surprised over the phone. I'm just a surrogate mother. What matters do we have with each other apart from the affair? I'm not your wife, after all. You. Aaron was speechless. He only managed to sputter after a long while. You didn't act like you were just a surrogate last night. Aren't you a professional surrogate mother? April was enraged listening to him. But she said calmly, Well, my employer has good technique. Aaron was stunned. He didn't expect her to say that. His ego was suddenly boosted. She had never complimented him in bed before. He was pleased with this sudden appreciation of his manhood. That's right. Seems like she got really thirsty after being deprived for so long. The more you deprive someone, the more they want it. Aaron thought he had spoiled her in the past. He had always made himself so available and accessible. He fed her too well. She didn't know thirst and hunger anymore. I have more to come. Do you want to try it? Aaron grinned. He sounded seductive over the phone. April blushed before saying, Well, thanks. Why don't you go look for your moon lover instead? Aaron replied immediately. Don't you know the moon is only good for admiring from down below? No one ravishes the moon. People enjoy the canola flowers around them. So, she was the canola flower? What the fuck? She didn't know how to carry on the banter, so she said sarcastically, All right, since you can find canola flowers all around, you can go look for other flowers instead. She hung up after that. Aaron was stunned as he stared at his phone, lying disconnected. What a petty woman. What was wrong with comparing her to a canola flower? You could make canola oil with them, and he ate it every day. He didn't like any other cooking oils, after all. April had just gotten home. She put down her phone and rushed into the shower. They really went hard last night. His seed was leaking out the whole cab ride home. She was abashed. It was still flowing in the shower. Although her chance of pregnancy was low during her safe period, she still hoped for the best. After she was done, she washed all the clothes. Later in the afternoon, Winnie was back home and she looked worried. April, didn't you say you were coming back last night? Why are you only back in the afternoon now? April recalled her passionate night from before and blushed. She quickly started drying her hair to hide her embarrassment. The train was severely delayed. Why do you look so anxious? Are you going to ask about Ben? Yeah. Winnie looked nervous. Simon suddenly released a statement that they were going to terminate their contract with Ben. They have been embroiled in the controversy for the whole day. 
A lot of netizens are accusing him of poor work ethic and attitude. Of course there are netizens on his side too, but I just think the whole situation is odd. You were swapped out yesterday, and now Ben? Episode 296 Winnie felt especially sorry for April. April looked at Winnie while stroking her hair. Does it have something to do with whatever happened between you two? Asked Winnie. Seeing the concerned and anxious look on Winnie's face, April felt pity for her and also felt a little sad. Seriously, Winnie had been so worried about Ben all this time. If anything happened to Ben, she would be more worried for him than she would ever be for herself. Abruptly, April asked with a complicated look, Winnie, I want to ask you a question. Do you trust me? Winnie paused briefly and had a bad feeling rising from her heart. But still, she nodded and said, April, I trust you. We've only known each other for around a year, but we know each other's past better than anyone else. I clearly know what kind of person you are. April sighed and nodded. Then Winnie first spoke out with her guest. Was there a conflict between you and Ben? Was it because he was always late for work and made you work late with him? Winnie, I've met all sorts of unprofessional actors and actresses at work. April interrupted her and continued. Winnie, I hope you can prepare yourself for what I'm about to tell you. Winnie licked her lips, which weren't really dry. She was a pretty calm person, but when it came to Ben, she became nervous even before anything started. April dropped the towel, frowned, and said, Winnie, I don't know how deeply you and Ben loved each other back in high school. You even gave up on your own family for him and came to a strange place to study and work alone. So I guess you must love him so, so deeply. Many couples in a long-distance relationship break up in a year or two, but you two have been maintaining your relationship for nearly four years. Haven't you wondered if there's something wrong during the past four years? Winnie blinked. She tried to ignore the uneasy feeling in her heart while stuttering. What? What is wrong? I've asked Jennifer about it. Earlier, she worked with a Korean male star. They were in the crew together every day. She said that the agency was indeed very strict with him. It wasn't so bad that he could only make a personal call every four or even five days, and that he always needed to be extra careful. Besides, no matter how busy he was, he always had a couple of hours of sleeping time a day, right? Did his company even hire people to watch him while he was sleeping? Winnie's delicate face started turning pale. April, are you trying to say that he doesn't care about me anymore? If he has fallen in love with someone else, if he doesn't love me anymore, he could have told me about it. I'm not someone who'd expose his scandals after breaking up. Winnie, perhaps he still loves you. After all, you've done so much for him, so he made you a promise. He told you that as long as you become a star, you two can be together openly. He told you that he's still young. But how can you be sure that he will really keep his word when he reaches the top and becomes a real superstar? April sounded a little emotional. She wasn't blaming Winnie for being silly. She had been silly once, too. She simply disliked Ben. Winnie opened her mouth, paused briefly, and then asked in a dry voice, April? Did something happen when you were in Beijing? Yes. April nodded. Because he stood you up, I went to talk to him. I asked him to treat you well, but he got angry. He said that I'm mad at him because he refused to help me when I was competing against the other dubbers for roles in the game. He thought I was bearing grudges for that. Felt really annoyed. But still, it wasn't a big thing. He didn't know me after all. However, his assistant told the director that I tried to seduce him, so the director immediately switched my schedule with Haley's and scolded me. Winnie's heart sank. She was devastated and disappointed. She was embarrassed, too. He was her boyfriend. He was the one who questioned her good friend's character. His assistant was the one who hurt her good friend. She would never believe that April would try to seduce Ben. April had Aaron, after all. A good man who loved her to no end. How could... His assistant, did he consider your reputation in the industry at all? Yeah, his assistant was really cocky. 
He often conversed with Ben in Korean and told him not to bother with low-grade people like us. They thought I didn't understand Korean, of course. April scoffed. You don't know that I know Korean, Japanese, English, and even French. Winnie felt miserable listening to her. She knew that April wasn't someone who would make a mountain out of a molehill. There must have been several unpleasant encounters for her to get so disgusting. April sighed when she saw the upset look in Winnie's eyes. These are small things. I wouldn't have told you if not for other things. I went to look for Ben after that, and he told me that he didn't know about what his assistant did. His assistant acted on his own accord, and he would help me clear things up. I lied to him, saying that I would tell you about what had happened, and he said that I was trying to sow discord between the two of you. He threatened me, saying that he would ruin my career if I said a word. Winnie wanted to dig a hole for herself. She often complimented Ben in front of her. She hadn't expected him to act so repulsively in front of her good friend. She stuttered after a long while. He didn't used to. He wasn't like this. Maybe, maybe he got famous and is acting a little overboard. Well, it would have been fine if he was just acting a little arrogant. No one can really preserve the entirety of themselves after receiving such adoration and fame, after all. But it would be scary if he became unrecognizable. April continued. When I left, I overheard his assistant talking to him in Korean again. He thought that Ben fancied me. And Ben told him that there are women like me all over the street. He sounded very nasty. But that wasn't all. His assistant said that young mistress wouldn't be pleased if she knew about this and cautioned him to treasure young mistress. Ben only chuckled when he heard that, and he didn't deny anything. Young mistress? Winnie's mind was a blank. Her eyes were soulless. She looked like a little girl who had just lost her favorite doll. Yeah, young mistress. April nodded. She hated seeing Winnie hurt like this. Winnie, I understand your pain. I would imagine it's the same kind as when Isaac brought Rosaria to me. I was like you, and I thought that my world had collapsed. I only told you this because I didn't want you to be clueless in love. Think about it. Someone that his assistant calls young mistress? She should come from an important family. She might even be the daughter of someone important in this company. Winnie asked in a daze. You mean to say... Ben found himself a rich man's daughter? April frowned. He can't be sure. But a normal man would deny things when someone says something like that. He should have clarified and denied relations with this young mistress. But he didn't say a word about it. He just smiled. That could either mean that he was just playing around with her, or there was really something going on between them. Winnie was taking in short gasps of air. It pained April to see her pale, small face. She knew these things, but she needed April to break them down for her bit by bit before she can confront the reality of things. April... Winnie was stunned for a short while, then she felt as if someone was banging her hard against the floor. April, I don't understand. Ben, why did he become like that? That is not the person I know. He was brave, honest, funny. He told me that no matter what he turned into or how high he reached, he'd always love me. He said that in the future he'd stand at the peak of his life and announce to the world that I'm his girlfriend. Winnie... It might not be exactly like what I said. Perhaps I misunderstood. Winnie was panicking, so April tried to comfort her. There are some things I just wanted you to know. You have to understand that you shouldn't pin all your hopes on that person, and you shouldn't make him your sole goal. You have already spent your youth for him, so I don't want you to waste all your good years on him. Even if he's only flirting with another woman, to me, it'd be intolerable. If he flirts with other women before getting married, what will he do after he gets married? So don't hold your breath waiting for him. But I have already pinned all my hopes on him. Winnie was now overwhelmed by the confused, helpless feeling. She wanted to cry. My parents didn't want me to be with him and become a singer. But for him, I came here without hesitation. When I left home, I swore to my parents that I'd prove it to them. I said that Ben would marry me and that I wouldn't come home until that day. I thought about marrying him and what our marriage would be like. Her eyes reddened and filled with tears as she was talking. April held her hands. Her hands were even shaking. 
In fact, she wanted very much to say to Winnie that from the time Ben went to Korea alone and started his career successfully to the present, when his career was like the sun in broad daylight, he easily stood out from the fierce competition. Was he really capable and lucky? Or had someone powerful been supporting him? What? Smart? She could have thought of that, but she wasn't willing to think about the ugly side of that person. Winnie, I can only tell you that you have the right to choose. April sighed. You can turn a blind eye and pretend that nothing happened. After all, he's not breaking up with you. You can also break things off with him. That way you'll no longer live for him. You'll live a life for yourself. There's another way, which is to let things stay where they are. No matter which way you choose, I'll respect you. Such a long relationship can't end so easily after all. In a relationship, everyone had their own reasons to make choices. April wanted Winnie to make the decision by herself, even though she really didn't like Ben. To be honest, she felt that Ben wasn't even a decent person. Winnie stayed silent for quite a while. April was right. Such a long relationship couldn't end so easily. She just didn't know where to start. She felt really sorry for April. Earlier, she'd asked Ben to help April, but he refused. Later on, he accused April of bearing a grudge. Now he had even caused a problem with April's work. That had already sowed discord between her and Ben. Ben didn't respect her friend. Unlike him, Aaron introduced her to a music company and helped her with her career because she was April's friend. Even though he did that to get revenge on Mary, he hadn't really needed to go that far. He did it simply because she was April's friend. Episode 297, Break Up Not to mention, there was a possibility that Ben had a fling with another woman. The more she thought about it, the more heartbroken she felt. Although April hadn't said some things, she knew them deep down in her heart. Ben might not just be flirting with that young mistress. He might have even used her for his own purposes. Yeah, every time he called her... He acted so secretively. Was he really that scared of his company? Maybe someone was with him. She had suspected it before, but she never allowed herself to project her suspicions further. She didn't think her high school sweetheart would do something so nasty. April went into the kitchen to cook, leaving Winnie alone on the sofa. When she emerged from the kitchen with food, Winnie was already gone. She sighed. Winnie was calling Ben by the roadside. The user was unavailable. She walked around for a long time, and she kept dialing his number. He didn't pick up her phone calls. Winnie's heart was stone cold by the end of it. That was her boyfriend, uncontactable when she needed to hear him the most. What was he doing then? Was he with another woman? Winnie didn't know what to do with herself. She thought of ending things between them, but the thought cut deep in her heart, physically hurting her. She felt sick thinking about forgetting things and holding on to the relationship as well. She got a call back from him three days later at 11 o'clock at night. When she saw her phone buzz with his caller ID, she was still in a daze. She'd been waiting every minute of her life. She was always checking her phone, even in class, always distracted. Every day she waited, the colder her heart became. She picked up the call, and Ben sounded apologetic over the line. Winnie, I'm sorry. Things have been rough with Fun recently, and the company has been scrambling to fix things. I've been swamped. Sorry to return your call so late. Winnie couldn't help but ask. It's quite a big issue, but are you really that busy that you can't even return a call? I waited for three days before I heard anything from you. You could have sent me a text at least. Don't you have a minute to yourself? Winnie, why are you being so demanding today? We've always managed thus far. Ben was put off. Winnie bit her lip. She was trying to stop herself from crying. Yeah, we've always managed thus far. I've never thought much about it. Ben was silent for a while before he suddenly asked. Did April say something to you? What could she say? Winnie asked sarcastically. I don't know what she said to you, 
but I don't think she would have said anything good. Winnie, do you trust me or her? Winnie fell silent and replied, Ben, April is my good friend. I know for a fact that she was around when I was lonely, not you. She was the one who encouraged me when things got hard. You don't trust me then. Ben sounded disappointment and angry. Did you know that my image has gone to ruins because of her? My image that I worked so hard on to be able to come back. I have all these controversies surrounding me now. People are criticizing me for having a poor work ethic. Winnie was stunned. Ben, they had evidence that you were late to your recordings. I waited for you there before. You were more than an hour late. I was running late because of other events on my schedule. I didn't do it on purpose. Who isn't late nowadays anyway? Ben defended himself angrily. Yeah, you can afford to be late every day now that you are popular. How can you push the blame to someone else without reflecting on yourself? Winnie felt that he sounded unfamiliar. Ben, when did you become like this? I'm always like this. Hearing her words, Ben was a little angry because she actually chose to side with April. Besides, I can't do whatever I want sometimes. I was late because the company didn't arrange the schedule well or because of some unexpected situation. How can that be my fault? No matter why you were late, you don't seem sorry at all. On the contrary, you're blaming others. Winnie felt a little uncomfortable. Ben, I sometimes attend events and work with stars too. Last year I took part in the New Year's Gala at the TV station. I saw Kester Sanchez there. He's a very well-respected singer who has won the Golden Melody Award a couple of times. He wasn't like you. He even got there an hour early to coordinate better with the TV station and everyone else. How can you compare me with him? Ben said without thinking. He used to be popular, but he's only a has-been star now. He doesn't have much work to do, so starting to work earlier or later makes no difference to him. Like him? The commercial value of every minute that I have is way higher than his. Winnie couldn't believe it. April's words made her have doubts, and Ben's words allowed her to see him as a whole new person. She didn't realize it before. Was it because the conversations that they had before were too short? It might also be because they never talked about these kinds of things. Her Ben had changed. He became so snobbish. Ben, have you forgotten about your original intention? You said that you only wanted others to hear you sing. Why do you think so much of money now? You already have a lot of money. Winnie, I can only say that you don't know me well enough, or maybe you don't care about money because your family's rich. Your parents didn't want us to be together because my family wasn't as rich as yours. Isn't that right? Ben said in a deep voice, emphasizing the last three words. So, for money and fame, you hooked up with that so-called young mistress? Winnie asked. Ben stayed silent for a couple of seconds and then responded in a deep and cold voice. What do you mean? Ben, April speaks many languages. I'm afraid you don't know that yet. She has passed Korean test band six, so she might speak better Korean than you. About those words that your assistant said and those small tricks you guys played, she knew it all. She just didn't point it out. Winnie chuckled with an extra soft and gentle voice. However, tears were gushing out of her eye sockets and she couldn't stop it. For a moment, Ben's brain was blank. He was pretty shocked to learn that April understood Korean, but soon he calmed down and said, I didn't think she'd even make up ridiculous lies like that about me. It's because I caused the company to change her schedule. That was my assistant's mistake. I promised her that I'd clarify it for her. She pulled strings found an unknown boy and had me replaced. I was disgraced because of her. I didn't blame her for that, but now she's trying to frame me. Winnie couldn't even bear listening to him. Enough. Ben, that person you're talking about is my friend. She's a friend who's been helping your girlfriend the whole time. I share an apartment with April. Don't I know what kind of person she is? I never told you that I signed the contract with a music company and got good resources for my career. Because April found someone to help me. I'm not silly enough to doubt a person who has helped me. What have you ever done for me? It's been so many years. How have you ever helped me? 
I don't know if there's anything happening between you and another woman or not, but what you just said makes me feel like we're no longer two people from the same world. Based on your current value, I think you might really hook up with another woman. Let's break up. If there's a misunderstanding, we can resolve it. If there's a problem with your moral quality, I think we're no longer good matches for each other. Ben was shaking from anger. You think my character is flawed? Winnie, have you been brainwashed by her? We've been together for so many years. How can you break up with me over an outsider? April was never an outsider to me. She's also not the only reason why I'm breaking up with you. Winnie was trying her best to hold back her tears. Ben, as your ex-girlfriend, I sincerely wish you the best on your career. I hope you'll be able to rectify your mistakes and improve to become a better person. You never know what will happen. It'll be best for you if you stay down to earth and do the right things. I can't hold on to this relationship anymore. I gave you the best years of my youth, but I don't want to give you my remaining years in the future. Goodbye. She hung up immediately after. She was the one who hung up first this time. He was always the one who had to go first. She craved hearing more of his voice, his breathing. She didn't need to work hard for anyone anymore. What was she going to do with herself now? Who was she working towards being a singer for? Who did she leave her family for? She had nothing to look towards. Winnie sat on her bed like a fool. The next day, April woke up to see Winnie cooking noodles in the kitchen. She felt warmed by her gesture. Winnie, you are so great. I get free food when I'm with you. When I stayed with Aaron, I had to cook for that man like a slave. April suddenly noticed her red-rimmed eyes, and she was taken aback. What? What happened? She had never seen Winnie like that before. Winnie lowered her head quickly and scooped the noodles into a bowl. I broke up with Ben. April was shocked. She felt bad as she looked at Winnie. I'm sorry. If it's because of what I said. No. I just realized when I was talking to him that we don't share the same values anymore. Winnie shook her head sadly. Her voice turned hoarse. He has changed. April nodded. She trusted Winnie's taste. Ben must have been a good person in the past. He was just not the same as before after entering the entertainment industry. I realized that we have different upbringings, and we wouldn't be happy even if we forced ourselves to stay together. We haven't really fought till now because we never lived together. I'm sure we would have had our fair share of conflict in the future if we married. That's true. April sighed. Just like how I almost broke up with Aaron on several occasions. Winnie sighed as well. I'm too embarrassed to go back to my parents now. And the new semester is starting. I guess I have to see this to the end. I'm going to get a job and earn money. See where life takes me, I guess. Yeah, that's the attitude. Don't let the opportunities go to waste. You might even be more popular than Ben in the future. He might come crawling back to you. By then, you could just cast him a side glance and brush him off. How dare he try to pursue you when he's not that famous yet? April burst out into laughter. Winnie burst out laughing as well, forgetting her sorrows momentarily. I'm <laughs> pretty excited now that you've painted such a beautiful picture. Wait till you become famous. April patted her shoulders. Yeah, I'm still far from him. Winnie sighed and decided to pick herself up. Forget it. Let's eat now. I need the strength to fight and make him regret his decisions. Yeah. If you still have any grievances or need someone to drink with you, I'm always here. Be warned. I'm not the good kind of drunk. Winnie was stunned. How bad? I don't know. Ever since I drank that one time, Sylvia doesn't want to go out drinking with me again. April shrugged. She wouldn't be asking April to accompany her then. She'd save them both the embarrassment. Episode 298 Because She's Already Pregnant Winnie put the noodles into the bowls and then gave the large bowl to April. April finished the noodles and even drank the broth. After that, she sighed. Why am I still not full? Winnie even burped when hearing that. Half a bowl of noodles had already made her feel stuffed. April had a full bowl of noodles, 
still felt like it was not enough when he really admired her for her great appetite. You can have some of mine. I'm already very full anyway. Thank you. April pushed her bowl forward. Winnie gave April almost all the noodles in her bowl and then sat there watching April eat happily. She had known April was a good eater since long ago. April was always slim, added with the fact that she had a lot to do every day. She didn't gain weight easily. Winnie was very jealous of her. Unlike April, she could gain weight very easily. Um, have you realized that your recent appetite is better than usual? Winnie couldn't help but ask. No? April paused slightly. Before, such a large bowl of noodles that I made would be enough for you, said Winnie. And lately, I always find you eating snacks at night. Every time we ate in the cafeteria, you had more rice than the last time. April blinked and picked up the bowl to drink the broth. Are you pregnant? Winnie asked. April spit out the broth in her mouth, saying, Don't scare me. What's to be scared of? Haven't you always wanted to have Mr. Bennett's baby? Winnie sighed. If April got pregnant, she could finally stop being a spy. Being a spy felt pretty awful. April was a little confused. She did want to get pregnant, but it could be scary when it happened suddenly. No way, she said. Why not? You're so passionate. You can do it anywhere. I doubt you have condoms in your pockets at all times, said Winnie mercilessly. April raised the bowl to cover her face and coughed slightly. Yes, they had done it just a couple days ago. She had skipped a period. Did that have something to do with the pregnancy? Realizing that possibility, April started to feel uneasy. She wanted to buy a pregnancy test right away and find out if she was pregnant or not. After breakfast, she passed by a hospital. She wanted to go in and buy a pregnancy test, but she noticed that someone was following her stealthily, so she didn't do it. She really admired Esma now. To confirm if she had really broken up with Aaron or not, Esma even hired people to stalk her. Esma seemed to have way too much free time. Well, she didn't need to work, so April assumed that she had lots of free time. She couldn't ask Winnie to buy a pregnancy test for her, as it could still make Esma suspect her. After a slight hesitation, she called Esma and said, I want to remind you that I've been broken up with Aaron for nearly a month. Prepare the evidence you mentioned. Don't swallow your words when the time comes. Esma's silvery chuckles could be heard. April, to be honest, I don't believe you. Aaron went to New Jersey for a business trip a couple of days ago, and you were in New Jersey too. That's kind of a coincidence, isn't it? I went to New Jersey for work. April was a little worried, and she didn't know if Esma had hired people to stalk her in New Jersey. We never saw each other. Didn't you see that he's always with that lawyer called Kiera? He's falling in love with her. Are you satisfied now? Yeah. I tore you two apart and gave that lawyer an opportunity. Esma sneered. April worried that she might change her mind. I can't do anything about that. I don't have the power to control him. Kira has been fond of him for a long time. I broke up with him, so she grasped the opportunity to get close to him. You can tell your daughter to do the same. Speaking of her daughter, Esma was furious. No matter what she said to try to convince her, she wouldn't have any of it. She had said she didn't want to implicate Aaron, and now she was sleeping in the armed forces dormitories. Are you going to go back on your word? April asked nervously. I wouldn't be sure if I were to find out that you're still talking to him or lying to me, Esma said angrily before she hung up. April sighed. She wasn't sure if Esma would give her the evidence now. She had to find another way. Wednesday at the Splingo Corporation. Marvin received a call from Lewis and frowned. He waited a while before reporting back to Aaron. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Lewis said they wouldn't let Miss Eisenberg go. Aaron slammed on the keyboard and raised his voice. Don't they know who I am? I did tell them. Marvin was helpless. They said that since Miss Eisenberg has a beautiful voice and her technique and skills are top-notch, they wouldn't let such a talent go easily because they wouldn't be able to find an appropriate replacement. What was wrong with Mr. Lewis? Aaron rubbed his forehead. Marvin continued. I think a man who thinks that Miss Eisenberg is extremely beautiful might have helped her out. I heard that he's good friends with Morris Lewis. Speaking of Morris, he's a prodigy when it comes to programming and software. Geniuses are often friends with geniuses. Do you think that the man who has a crush on April is a genius as well? Aaron laughed mockingly. 
Geniuses are nothing but theory. They're all fools. Marvin was used to this. His boss was narrow-minded and petty. He wouldn't be himself if he didn't insult his love rivals. Aaron crossed his arms in frustration. He hadn't expected Morris Lewis to ignore his request. It seemed like April would have to go to New Jersey in the middle of the month after all. April would never agree if he asked her not to go. Just when he was in the middle of his dilemma, Henry called. Mr. Bennett, I'm back. You asked me to take a look at Miss Eisenberg's health before? You're back. I'll take you there immediately. Aaron closed his laptop. All right. Aaron put down his phone and started putting on his jacket. Deliver this document to Mr. Richard. Marvin grimaced. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Richard has gone fishing? Aaron was stunned. With Jennifer. He had been listening to Richard talk about courting Jennifer all day long. No, with his friends, Mr. Max and them, if I'm not wrong. Aaron frowned. He's always fooling around with Max and that bunch of rascals. He's not treating his job seriously. No wonder he can't get any girls. I should have let him stay in the Great Northwest as a bachelor for the rest of his life. Marvin rubbed his nose. These documents. Call him and ask him to come back to handle these, Aaron ordered. Before he left his office, Aaron walked back to snap a picture of the thick stack of documents. Marvin didn't know what he was up to at first until he opened his social media application half an hour later while waiting beneath Dr. Henry's building. Mr. Bennett had posted the picture he had taken earlier with the caption, A certain vice president left a pile of work for me to do while he was out having fun at the lake. With a nonsense work ethic and no sense of responsibility, I hope he stays single for the rest of his life. Jennifer commented below, he really might stay single for the rest of his life. Poor Vice President Richard hadn't seen the post yet. He would be sad if he saw it, as his good friend was saying bad things about him in the Instagram moments again. April was sitting in the classroom, waiting for class to begin. She was a little bored, so she picked up her phone and checked the latest Instagram moments. Soon she saw Aaron's post. Under that post, Richard had already left his comment. Aaron, don't you try to discredit me. April, the president wants you in his office. One of April's classmates abruptly patted her back. April gave a start, then felt that Aaron had something to do with it. After about ten minutes of walking, she knocked on the door of the office and walked in. Aaron was sitting on the couch with Dr. Henry, legs and arms crossed, looking like an elite businessman. As April came in, he raised his eyebrows and said, President Torres, this student of yours doesn't seem to respect you at all. She made you wait twenty minutes. As he was clearly trying to stir up trouble, April responded impatiently. The school is huge. Of course, it took that long to walk over here. Sensing the tense atmosphere, the president hurriedly tried to make peace. It does require that span of time. Um, April, Mr. Bennett brought a doctor here to check on you. Miss Eisenberg, please sit down. Dr. Henry smiled and took out the stethoscope. Once he put the stethoscope in his ears, Aaron grasped his hands and stared at him with dagger eyes. Where are you looking at? Dr. Henry responded. Mr. Bennett, didn't you ask me to give Miss Eisenberg a checkup? I'm going to listen to her heartbeat. Her heart is perfectly healthy. I want you to find out why her period is late. Does she have a kidney weakness? Aaron's handsome face wore a grim look. No other man would ever be allowed to touch his woman's breast. April felt slightly awkward. President Torres was still there. It was embarrassing to mention her period. And kidney weakness? Wasn't that a man's problem? It's just osculation. If Miss Eisenberg has a cough problem, any doctor would have to do it. Dr. Henry felt a little helpless. But still, he put away the stethoscope and asked April to reach out her hand. Then he put a hand on her wrist to feel her pulse. Thankfully, Aaron wasn't possessive enough to forbid him from touching her hand. Or he would have no way to find out what problem April had. April was pretty nervous. Yesterday, she had started to wonder if she was pregnant. What should she do if she was pregnant? She would definitely make Aaron suffer. Dr. Henry spent a while feeling her pulse, knitting his eyebrows together in a deeper and deeper frown. Switch hands, he said. He spent another while holding April's other wrist. Once he took away his hand, Aaron asked him patiently, How's it going? Should she take some medicine to induce menstruation? Dr. Henry smiled. She might lose the baby if she took that kind of medicine. Aaron froze in shock, as if someone had just poked his acupuncture point. Baby? What did the doctor just say? April had a baby? April was stunned as well. 
She had thought that she might be pregnant, but she wasn't sure. When Dr. Henry confirmed it, she was completely astonished. So, was she going to be a mother at such a young age? She hadn't even finished college yet. She wasn't prepared for that. Even though she had signed the pregnancy contract with Aaron, she didn't think that she could get pregnant so easily. Henry, make it clear. Aaron excitedly grasped Dr. Henry's arm. Mr. Bennett, Miss Eisenberg is pregnant. That's why her period's late. Dr. Henry laughed through clenched teeth as he was suffering pain. Imagine a place where the future of healthcare isn't just a vision, but a reality that happens every day. Welcome to... Episode 299. When did you find out about Esma? Aaron was staring with his eyes wide open. He released Dr. Henry and paced around the office multiple times before stopping in front of April. He bent forward and stared hard at her belly. It was so flat. How could there be a baby in there? It's a baby! He was thrilled as he rubbed his cheek all smiles like a silly boy. I told you there was a chance even during your safe period. I'm quite formidable. I can take down the safe period any time. Look, it's only been a few days and you're already pregnant. Damn, your skills have improved again. Impressive. April was flabbergasted. She had gotten pregnant in a few days. It wouldn't even be realistic in a television series. Dr. Henry was fighting back laughter. I don't think the sperm and egg would have implanted itself within a few days. Nobody would be able to tell if she was pregnant or not. I think Miss Eisenberg has been pregnant for about a month now, judging from her pulse. Aaron was stunned and lowered his head while he paused to think. Suddenly, it all made sense and he pounded his fist into his palm. I know. It must have been that time in the car. Either that or that time on the dinner table. <laughs> Principal Torres spat out a mouthful of tea. Dr. Henry snuck a look at April and nearly gave a thumbs up. The two of them were so liberal and passionate. No wonder Aaron was so smitten. No wonder. April was embarrassed. She stared at Aaron viciously and begged him to shut up. She wanted to crawl into a hole and hide there. Did he have to let the whole world know what they did in the car and on the dining table? Principal Torres was her principal, after all. All right, stop talking. She pinched Aaron's arm forcefully. Aaron ignored her and looked at Dr. Henry gleefully. It must be a girl, right? She'll be so pretty, cute, and intelligent. Dr. Henry sighed. Every man who learned that they would be a dad suddenly acted like a fool. Mr. Bennett, well, I... That must be it. Aaron turned to grasp April's hands in his own and looked properly around. April, you're so amazing. You've given me a little princess. April's expression was dark. The baby was probably just a small embryo and he could already tell that it was going to be a little princess. What a chance. Um, Mr. Bennett, could you hear me out? Dr. Henry muttered awkwardly. This isn't the most accurate form of confirmation. You should take Miss Eisenberg to do an ultrasound at the hospital. Aaron's face froze and he turned to glare at him. What do you mean? After all of this, you're not even sure if I'm going to have a little princess? Dr. Henry was about to cry. Of course he couldn't be sure if it was a little princess. It could be a little prince. Mr. Bennett was so unreasonable. Finally, April spoke up for her. You'll only know the gender of the baby after three months, if I'm not wrong. There's no way Dr. Henry could know. Principal Torres said enthusiastically, I think you can find out within a month. April glared at Aaron. What do you mean, anyway? You're not going to love the baby if it's a boy? Don't you want a baby boy to continue your family's name? That's so dated. Aaron said unceremoniously. What age are we living in now? How can a little boy compare to a cute little princess? Boys are like dog piss. April stroked her own belly. That was it. She wished that it wouldn't be a boy so that he wouldn't be despised by his own father. 
Seeing the look on his face, April couldn't help but remind him. Don't forget that you were a boy, too. Aaron pondered seriously and then responded, That's right. Two people with the same gender repel each other. Haven't you heard about that? April didn't reply. She would remember this. It seemed that Aaron and a lot of women were attracted to each other. Hearing what Aaron said, President Taurus even wanted to cry. He really wanted a boy, but his wife gave him a bunch of girls. Since we need to confirm it, go to the hospital with me now. Aaron stood up eagerly. April realized what had happened when Aaron dragged her to the door. No, I can't go to the hospital now, she said. Why? Aaron figured it out once he asked that question. Because of Esma? He asked. April was stunned. That was as shocking as the fact that she was pregnant. How do you know? She asked. So many thoughts popped up in her head at that moment. She couldn't figure out how Aaron knew about that. She had only told Kiara and Winnie. Did Kiara tell you about it? I'm so smart and capable. Do I need her to remind me of that? Aaron's chiseled face wore an unhappy look. He didn't tell her the truth because first he wanted to punish her. And second, he wanted her to have his baby. Now she was punished and was pregnant with his baby. She would never be able to run away from him. So there was no reason for him to keep pretending. However, he didn't want to talk to her about that now as they were in the president's office and Dr. Henry was there too. He dragged her quickly to the stairs. But suddenly, he realized that she was pregnant. So he hurriedly stopped and lifted April to his chest. What are you doing? Down! April gave a start. They were in the school's office building, so school leaders could be seen everywhere. How did he do that? I can't. Aaron wore a serious frown. These are stairs. What's wrong with stairs? You're pregnant. It's not safe for you to walk up and down stairs. What if you slip? I'll just carry you down. After saying that, Aaron carried her quickly downstairs. April put her arms tightly around his neck with fright. Please, this is even more dangerous, she thought. Downstairs, when Aaron put April into his car, Dr. Henry hurriedly caught up with him and said, Mr. Bennett, wait, I didn't have my car. Give me a ride. Go and take a taxi. I'm going to the hospital. Also, if I get to the hospital and find that April is not pregnant, I'll destroy you. Aaron said and then shut the car door. Dr. Henry was left speechless. How can Aaron just kick him down the ladder like that? He had come here especially for him. But after he did his job, Mr. Bennett threw him away like a piece of rag and threatened him. However, he did hope that he hadn't misdiagnosed April. In the car, Marvin turned and said to Aaron with surprise, Mr. Bennett, is Miss Eisenberg in a serious condition? Why are you going to the hospital? It's pretty serious indeed. She's pregnant. Aaron chuckled. Marvin opened his mouth wide and shocked. A short while later, he hurriedly smiled at Aaron and said, Mr. Bennett, congratulations. You're going to be a father. The look on Aaron's handsome face was beyond excited. Don't be jealous of me. Even though you're a couple years older than me, you'll become a father too. Olive seems to be a good girl. She's a little clumsy, but at least she has a good heart. Mr. Lewis and Olive? April was surprised. She felt great pity. She thought that Marvin would have a chance to be with Winnie, as she had broken up with her boyfriend. She thought that Marvin would have a chance to be with Winnie, as she had broken up with her boyfriend. But unexpectedly, Marvin was with Olive now. He was a nice guy, actually. Even though he was only an assistant, he had a great network of contacts and he was capable and thoughtful. He would take good care of Winnie. No, Marvin was frustrated. Mr. Bennett, that's not very nice of you. You have been saying terrible things about Olive and that girl has been avoiding me ever since then. Now that you're in a good mood again, you're saying that we're a compatible match? Aaron said casually, I was in a foul mood then. It was insensitive of you two to appear to be happily in love in front of me. Marvin grimaced. When did I ever do that? She merely bought me a mug. She's saying that you're her cup of tea. Isn't that obnoxious? 
Aaron grunted. Marvin didn't wish to defend himself further. April smiled. I thought that Assistant Marvin might stand a chance now that Winnie has broken up with her boyfriend. I guess not then. Marvin was stunned. His eyes looked hopeful. Winnie is single now? Yeah, they just broke up a few days ago. Aaron looked at his assistant and said coolly, You're thinking of Olive on one end and Winnie on the other? You're so fickle-minded. That's not true. Marvin felt wronged and he continued, Winnie is like a rare flower on the cliff. She might be a little out of my reach. She might not even like me that way. Olive is a quiet, cute girl, like a girl next door. She could marry me and we could spend the rest of our lives together. She might be more suitable for me. I don't know. Aaron frowned and quickly reached for April's hands. I only know that you should go after whoever you like. Don't flirt around like that. Mr. Bennett, not everyone can just get the girl like you. Marvin sighed. How could you think that you're not good enough for Winnie as my assistant? I'm disappointed that you would think that way. Aaron said, You've been someone I value for so many years. I approve of your capabilities and potential. You earn quite a bit too, don't you? Your yearly salary is over a million dollars, and you dabble in investments as well. You don't smoke or drink, you cook well, and you do chores. I would rate you 70 points as a man. I'm 100 points, of course. Marvin was shocked at his sudden outburst of affection. He had never heard his boss compliment him like this before. No wonder people said that men changed when they became dads. He had grown more compassionate. Mr. Bennett, do you think I can court Winnie then? Marvin snuck a look at April, and she didn't look like she was going to oppose the idea. He heaved a sigh of relief. Miss Eisenberg, do you think that Winnie would like someone like me? I don't know. It really depends on the individual when it comes to feelings. April said, I don't think women are always looking for material qualities in men or how they look. We're just looking for guys who will show us care and provide us warmth. Aaron nodded. Anyway, they're looking for men like me. You might not become me, but you can always learn from me. No way I'm learning from you, Marvin thought to himself. After the conversation ended, April turned to ask Aaron, you haven't told me. When did you find out about Esma? Who told you about it? Aaron cast her a side glance and said smugly, I found out long ago. I thought that your acting was terrible and I decided to play along with you. April was stunned. She found his statement sounded familiar. How dare he talk about her acting when he acts in such a dramatic and unrealistic way, she thought to herself. Did you know when I used Ryan to hurt you? April was puzzled. You were putting on an act when you stood below my block? Of course. Aaron nodded expressionlessly. I could tell what you were thinking at one glance. Marvin, who was driving the car, silently rolled his eyes. Feeling that Aaron was so shameless that he even said something like that. He had been so miserable during those couple of days. April was pretty unhappy as well. She couldn't understand how he had suddenly become so good at pretending. Jin you, Aaron snorted. You said that I might be exaggerating, but you actually should look at yourself. If I wasn't coordinating with you, Esma would have found out long ago. You... April immediately figured it out. When he told you about it, she said angrily through clenched teeth. How could she do that? She pressed me she wouldn't tell. Relax. I pressed her to find out that you didn't trust my acting skills. Aaron wore an aggrieved expression. He had been bearing a grudge about this. Fortunately, she told me the truth. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known your real purpose. If I hadn't known, to be honest, I'd have been rather disappointed. You broke up with me only because someone threatened you? Whatever plan you had, you did it because you didn't trust me. 
Hearing that, April felt slightly guilty. However, that feeling quickly faded away. He had known about her plan all along, so he was never really hurt. On the other hand, she thought that he was hurt for real, and because of that, she couldn't sleep or eat. She cried secretly as she hid on her balcony and kept looking down at him. But in the end, it turned out that he was only pretending. What about you? You just said that you've paid off the people who have been watching me long ago. Why did you still pretend not to know the truth then? You acted stealthily and signed that pregnancy contract with me. Why did you do that? Did you trick me into having a baby? The more she thought about it, the stranger she felt. I get it. You were with Kiera deliberately to make me feel jealous, weren't you? When I was so jealous and so sad, you showed up with that contract. In order to keep you from leaving me, I'd surely sign the contract. You're so evil. If I hadn't gotten pregnant this time, you'd have never told me the truth. Yeah, so what? At that moment, Aaron saw no reason to keep pretending. He proudly raised his chin like a winner and said, You were planning to have a baby to win me back in the beginning, weren't you? I've only fulfilled your little wish. Looking at his face, April wanted so badly to punch him. She even wanted to slap him to death with a slipper. What a bastard! He got what he wanted, and he was so smug. And why had Winnie exposed all her little secrets? She should have made friends more carefully. All right, I get it. April took a deep breath. I'll have the baby, but it'll be mine. Mine alone. It'll have nothing to do with you. How can that be possible? Can you provide the egg and sperm at the same time? Aaron didn't care what she said. He saw her as a little girl who was venting her spleen. It's in my uterus, so I can choose to have it or not. April gritted her teeth and glared at him. Aaron frowned and suddenly turned very sulky. Our little princess is so adorable. How could you say something like that? She'd be so sad if she heard you in your belly. Her mother doesn't even want her. That was so hurtful. April paused briefly after hearing what he said. However, what she felt was more aggrieved. He had entrapped her. She said those angry words because she wasn't happy about that. April was speechless. The guy was acting as if her baby was going to be a girl for sure. A girl would be nice. A baby girl who would be as cute as Sylvia. If she had a boy like Aaron, she'd probably have a heart attack. Who said I didn't want the baby? I don't want you, April said spitefully. Aaron ignored what she said. He knew that she was trying to tie him down with the baby. He knew how much she loved him. She just refused to admit it. All right. I decided not to be angry with you anymore, so stop holding grudges, Aaron said. April was missed that he was acting as if he was the bigger man who was forgiving her wrongdoings. April inhaled sharply and ignored him. But she was curious as to how he found out about the scheme. Aaron smiled cheekily when he saw her trying to ignore him. He started stroking her belly with a satisfied grin on his face. April was annoyed after a while and tried to peel his hands away from her body, but to no avail. Touch me. April pinched his hands forcefully, causing a bruise on the back of his hand. Aaron frowned. I won't tell you about how Esma got a hold of the evidence if you pinch me again. April was dying from curiosity, so she stopped tormenting him. She asked someone backing her. She was a rich man. Peter Williams from Panache Holdings, Aaron said. April was stunned. I didn't expect Peter Williams to be so formidable. How did he get a hold of the evidence, even before you did? Aaron's expression looked somber. Peter Williams isn't that formidable. I'm way more influential than he is. Esma knew about this because she came upon a document when she went to visit my dad at his office. She was snooping around and saw the information he had when he ran a background check on you. That was how she managed to grab a hold of the evidence before I could. David felt like something was off and looked into the matter and told me about it. If not, I would have been really heartbroken by your sudden breakup. It all made sense now. 
The whole time, Jizma was only supported by Peter Williams. She had thought there was someone even more formidable supporting her. She was one step ahead of Aaron, after all. It was just her evil scheme. So, your dad was the real mastermind behind this? April said grumpily. Why was he checking up on me? Was he going to use this information against me? He had plans to, but decided against it after he divorced my mother. Aaron decided to tell her the truth after some hesitation. He didn't hide the document well, but I scolded him about it. Don't worry, he won't do such things again. He has accepted you now. April was in disbelief. David accepted her. Wasn't he going on about Aaron marrying Jenica earlier on? Esma was the main issue now. Leave Esma to me. Aaron chuckled coldly. How dare she threaten you in our relationship? The nerve of her! Does she really think she's got it all now that she has Peter Williams? She thinks that she can manipulate our feelings and our lives? But she didn't expect me to set up a trap around her. Now I'm just waiting for her to make a fool out of herself. April looked at him in bewilderment. I just want to get a hold of the evidence. I'm worried that she would ruin it if she was antagonized. Don't worry. I'll make her hand it over willingly. If she enjoys threatening others, I will let her have a taste of her own medicine. Aaron sunk his body into the sofa and smiled eerily. April, I will let you know that you have underestimated your man. Hearing that, April sighed with relief. Since Aaron was able to deal with the people who had been helping Esma, she didn't need to worry. In fact, I was thinking that maybe I should tell you the truth. Last time when I talked to Esma on the phone, I felt that she might not give me the evidence unless you got together with Jenica. You should have thought about that long ago. Aaron snorted. How could you believe what a sneaky person said? Should I call you innocent or naive? Hearing his sarcastic talk, April felt frustrated. She responded grumpily. How dare you say that? If it wasn't for your father, would I possibly have fallen into her trap? Aaron crossed his arms and said, My father can't do anything right. And my woman is innocent and naive. People around me really make me worry. April was speechless. She decided not to say anything. In the hospital, Aaron found someone he knew who guided him in April straight to the B ultrasonic room. April laid on the small bed and the doctor put the probe on her belly. Aaron stood beside her, gazing straight at the computer screen. Doctor, is my wife pregnant? Hmm. The doctor spent quite a while staring at the screen before nodding. The fetus is already in her uterus. As the doctor confirmed it personally, Aaron got excited again. I saw it, he said. The little princess is developing pretty well. The corners of the doctor's mouth twitched slightly. However, as the president had told her to be extra nice to Erin, she asked patiently, Mr. Bennett, maybe you're looking at the wrong area? I'm not. That black sphere, isn't that my daughter? Erin pointed at the screen. That's not. That's just a shadow, the doctor said. The baby is a tiny embryo now. Most people can't see it unless they're professionally trained. Even when the tiny baby is 30 weeks old, some parents may still not be able to recognize its eyes and nose from the B ultrasonic image. Also, it might not be a girl. We can't tell yet. Why would the hospital have doctors for B ultrasounds if everyone could read a B ultrasonic image? April laid on the bed and raised her head as much as possible. She wanted to see the image, but couldn't. So at last, she gave up and said to the doctor, Doctor, just don't say that to him. He only wants a daughter. Really? The doctor laughed. Your husband is pretty nice. Nowadays, many men want boys to carry on their family names. Some fathers ask for an abortion when they find out their wives are pregnant with girls. I've seen lots of that. Those women really suffered. Hearing the word husband, April's cheeks burned slightly. She was too shy to explain that Aaron wasn't her husband. She didn't want people to know that she was pregnant before marriage. After hearing what the doctor said, Aaron wore a cold face and said, Every little girl is a baby angel. 
Why abort them? Those fathers should be in prison. The doctor smiled. Little girls aren't the only angels. Little boys are too. Boys are devils, Aaron said without thinking. Hearing that, the doctor glanced at April with a weird expression. She hoped that April was having a girl, as her husband seemed to really not like boys. Also, doctor, is there anything that my wife should pay extra attention to? Aaron asked in a low voice. He was now seeing April as his wife for sure. Um, I you should consult your gynecologist about that, said the doctor. They're specialists for that. Later, you also need to do a blood test. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.